And we're live. Rich Mitch, how are you, my friend? Yeah, buddy. I'm all right. Hey, buddy. I feel like it's been forever since we've live streamed. We've got 38 people here waiting already. Um, Hello, hi, everybody. Friends. Welcome. We love you. Good to see you. See a lot of familiar faces. So, what's everybody been up to? I, 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 I don't know what everyone else has been up to, but I've been, um, I've been all right. I feel all right. Last week was, uh, last week was strange. I had a, uh, I had toothache, and then I had jaw ache, like my general jaw hurt, and then I had ear ache, and then I had headache, mm. and then on like Saturday it sort of like sorted itself out, and now I feel, I feel fine. Does, does about as fine like as it was fun. It wasn't that much fun. Um, I had fun in perfume. Um, fun how? It was, like, do you play with uh, your bottles the way Bobby Dior does? Or uh, a bit, yes. Yeah, so you do you? Do you actually get them out and like play with them? Like, you know, as a kid, we would play with our our Hot Wheels or or spaceships or and stuff. Cars. Yeah, spaceships yeah. or I don't know, like Smash Up Dirt. You don't play Smash Up Derby with your bottles? Oh, absolutely not! Not smash up derby. That's too. That's that's too. That's too dangerous. Oh, uh, smash up derby. Like, like if I was to like smash them together. Um, GI or Eddie Murphy in Delirious, he'd bring GI Joes into the bathtub with his brother or something, and uh, he'd be like, "GI Joe swimming in the water," and then he'd like pull a GI Joe out of his asshole. You don't do something. Oh like my that, god! GI <laughs> oh. Joe swimming in the water, and he'd have like a little piece of shit on his GI Joe man head, and he'd like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I've got some perfumes that smell a bit like shit, um, but I haven't, I haven't ever actually got poo on my on a ball on your cap. Um, no poo on your not cap. on a cap, not on the tip, not on the cap, not on the bottle, not on the bottom, nothing, nothing like that. Um, I just can't. Uh, What's up, Rudy? Can't have it. All right, so I've I've totally been avoiding the not avoiding, but I've just missed. It. Hello to everybody. Hello. We'll just keep up with the chat. See a lot of familiar faces. I guess y'all know why we're here. Um, let's get right into it. I mean, there's a couple there's a couple events unfolding from Guerlain. A couple of stories that are breaking. Um, two separate incident. Uh, I guess they're two se very separate. Uh, instances. Uh, one is from old man Guerlain. Jean-Paul has been a being abused, elder abuse by his son. In, uh, in Allegedly. In, yeah, allegedly. And in, in, in news that's been broken this weekend, he is not feeding them or he's got the power turned off in his place. The heat, he doesn't give them any allowance. About $150 a week for food. Um apparently rubbing dog shit into their shoes and, and not feeding the horses or giving them their vaccinations or cleaning their stalls. And, you know, they have kind of this massive estate on 133 acres. So it looks like just a very beautiful home and it's not being taken care of properly. It's, it's, it's been let go and being run down. Um, it looks like Jean Paul is, he's struggling with dementia and, and Alzheimer's and, probably losing his his sanity so i don't know what's going on there or what's going to happen but it looks like it might go to a court or something and also if if you know on, on a very separate instance if if you caught the um the personal a stream with his interview with gabe gabe kind of let it it, it 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 feels like a slip and i caught it and i thought you know when i heard it i thought okay you know he made an error and he probably meant somebody else, but he said that Thierry Wasser was relieved of his duties and, and, you know, personally caught it and he brought him back to it and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it kind of got silent and weird there for a moment. Right. And personally, <laughs> yes. personally made him clarify, like, do you know what you just said? And Gabe had to like recollect his thoughts. And he's like, did I say the right thing? Did I, did I err? And he's like, yeah, like Terry Wasser has been relieved of his perfuming duties at Guerlain. And now he's just kind of a front man. And, you know, over the past couple of years, I think we've all seen this happen. This doesn't seem like it's, you know, groundbreaking news. I think nobody's ever just really said it in that way. 
We know Wasser has been creating less. We know he's been traveling more. We know he's been, you know, doing the public relations things. He's been going around from city to city promoting Guerlain. He's been traveling the world, sourcing oils and, and materials and, 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 you know, cultivating relationship with farmers. So, I mean... It's not that it was leaked. This was all very obvious. It's just nobody's ever really put in the words or Terry Wasser's never really come out and say, you know, he's he's given up his role as head perfumer. Um, if you go into, the, you know, the last couple of year of releases, Delphine Jelk is, is quite credited with a lot of those on Fragrantica, you know, Santal Pauros, even Lomi Dial. And, and she had done the... We're going back, you know, 2009. She had done the original Le Petit Robe Noir before Thierry had done it. You know, it was a very limited release. I think it was called, um, it wasn't even called Le Petit Robe Noir. It was just called like Model 1. That's what uh, Le Petit Robe Noir was. Then there was a Model 2 and it was a very limited, just the same way before they had done um, Mon Guerlain, there was a, a release called Mon Exclusive. So it was just like a, a test market perfume to see how consumers would react to it. So I think that's really what um, Mon Guerlain, the, the Model 1 was, a, a market test. And then once that had succeeded, Terry Wasser had or was credited for uh, Le Petit Robe Noir. I'm not sure if if that was like a joint project between her and Delphine Jelk. So that's kind of what, what broke. And it was like, you know, we're all kind of aware of this, but just the way that Gabe had put it was like, oh, you know, now it's like, now it's actually a thing. You know, it's real. It, yeah. puts, it puts substance to this. And now there's like feelings involved. And it seemed like Wasser had gotten in touch with Gabe and, and he was irritated by the, you know, the idea of having to share or relinquish his duties as the headmaster perfumer of, um, of Guerlain. And he got a little bit snipey with Gabe and said, you know what, if that's the way you feel, why don't you just call Delphine and talk to her yourself? And uh, it seems like the conversation ended there. But Probably interesting, isn't. you know. Interesting because, you know, Wasser has, you know, on this channel and I guess amongst Gerlenophiles, he's always been looked at as like a, a legend, you know, as somebody that's going to save Gerlon even from the monster themselves, Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, you know, even though he was working for Louis Vuitton, we always felt like he was on our side, the, uh, yeah. the consumer side, the, uh, the enthusiast side, you know, I always felt like we had him in our corner. And I guess that for me as an enthusiast makes it kind of hard, not hard, but maybe a little bit sad for Wasser because I know it can't be easy um, because it's just, you know, we all know how proud Terry is, you know, when he speaks of, of perfuming and we know he's a purist at heart as much as he doesn't like making, you know, the Le Petit Road Noir flankers. We know he loves, he loves Guerlain. He, he speaks very highly of them. And I wonder how this is going to change his relationship with the brand and, and what his relationship with Jelk is. We don't know. Um, he maintains that it's a very, you know, it, it's a very fruitful relationship, but it doesn't seem like they do create together from the things that he's said in the past. So it's all a little bit kind of, uh, you know, walking on eggshells right now. So we'll see how this develops, but that's, that's where we're left at. What did you take from it, Rich? Which which part? The let's, let's, um, let's go to what Gabe said about um Terry Wasser um losing his okay. position. I got a plug in. Okay. Let's hear your part. So, let's hear okay. your how did you observe that and, and how did you kind of process what was going on? So when he said it first, right, the first instance. I sort of like thought he'd misspoken as well. I think Persilis did. Persilis was like taken aback because he did take him back to it. And it was like, it was like, wait a minute. He, he said that in error. He must have said that in error. Um, and Persilis is quite thoughtful. He, he, he like 
He's not as he's not as reactionary as I am. I'd have I'd have stopped Gabe straight then and there, but he waited for a couple of sentences while he processed it, and then he said, "Like, can I take you back what you've just said?" And then he he said he said you said Thierry Vassar is like not the head perfume or, or like words to that effect. And Gabe was like, "Yes, if I just said something absolutely shocking, do you know what I mean?" He was like, "Gabe is Gabe was just like, oh God, what have I said? Like, have I said something? Have I said something that's going to get we both like sued?" Um, and then he was like, "You made him clarify it." And then Gabe was like, "Yes," as though he was waiting for like waiting for the shocking part to come. Gabe was like waiting for like personally to say, "But you also said that you'd once killed someone in 1985." Do you know what I mean? It's like. He didn't, he didn't, he, there was no shock from Gabe at all. Right, like you know? there was something else about to come. Yes, yes, like there was something else, like he'd revealed like that he was like, I don't know, like he'd revealed something that he was in fact Pierre Bourdon's like long lost son. You know what I mean? He wasn't, he didn't, he, there was no, there was no like great reveal there from like Gabe. And then he was like, yes, very matter of factly, you know? Right. Um, yes, that's what happened. I thought everybody knew this kind of vibe. And like, because, Personally, he's even said, because that's news to me. And it, I think it was news to a lot of people. Well, um, I, th I think a lot of us had just assumed that they were sharing responsibilities over there. And we don't know how they would distinguish who gets to do what. But that's been going on for years now. Nobody's ever really come out and said, Terry Wasser has been relieved of his head perfuming duties, including Terry himself, who personally had interviewed just a few months back. And, and Wasser had spoken openly about their relationship. It's just, for me, I'd never heard it said like that from a respectable, um, from a respectable, um, from like a respectable source. You right. know, this isn't yeah. like, this isn't like, this isn't just like someone talking shit on the internet. This is somebody who's like written a book, you know? Um, this is like someone who's like, like quite well connected as far as like perfume as in perfume. He's spoken to Thierry Vassar about literally, even though it was a very short, brief conversation. Um, he's spoken to, he's spoken to Thierry Vassar. So when like my reaction was the same as Persilase, it's like I was like, what? And then he went back and like said it again and clarified it. Um what did you think of Wasser's interview with Persele, like of Wasser himself. I think Vasa likes being head perfumer of Guerlain and he doesn't want to lose that. I think that I think he's got an ego and I also think that he's very talented and deserves to be in the position that he's in. Um, I think that he's Did very you find knowledgeable. Him elusive? Did you find him elusive in that interview? With Persilis, uh, like Vassa, Thierry Vassa, the yes. one that he did recently with Persilis. Um I found it that he wasn't going to tell, I found that like perfumers and stuff, they're a bit like magicians. They're not going to tell you how it's done. Um, they're a bit like, he, he, they're never going to answer it because I think they like the, the element of mystique. Right. I don't think, I don't think that like perfumers want to tell everyone this is how it's done, this is what is done. Um, this is why we do it. This is how we do it. You know what I mean? And and because I don't think they want to give all the secrets away. And I think Vasa likes the mystique. And the I'm talking, I'm talking more specifically when it was brought up about his relationship with Delphine Jelk. You know, he, he didn't uh, he didn't stir anything up, but he obviously didn't go into great detail. He just said they worked independently of each other, which I thought was really weird considering they work for the same brand. They do the exact same job. Why wouldn't two people put their heads together when it comes to creating? I think because he, he might resent, he might resent, um, being moved on. Nobody like, it's like aging. You know, uh, nobody wants to get old. Nobody wants to, um, no one wants to be yesterday's man. She's the future. He's. So do he's you not. think Wasser is threatened by Yelk? Possibly. Yeah. But I also think that he's got an, e I think he's also got a, got an ego. And I think that 
um, hey, so I think he's got an ego. I, I think he's a proud. I think he's proud, and I think he also likes the attention and the sort of um, what are, what is it called where somebody gets like um, where somebody gets like the prestige. He likes the prestige that comes with being in mm. charge of Gurlon. You know, yeah, um, right? And tell that from recognition and fame and being. It, it all goes back to being loved and noticed and heard, right? And now he's got to share that spotlight with somebody else, and it's probably not easy for him, considering how long he's been at Gurlon. And he was the one that you know was past the torch from the last standing Gurlon member, being Jean Paul. Yep. You know, he took that torch from Jean-Paul Guerlain and now he's got to hand it off to the to the first woman perfumer at Guerlain. There's never been a head woman perfumer. This will be the first time ever if Delphine's given that position. Yeah. It would be it would be very interesting. I'm not sure she'll be given that position for a while. Um I'm not sure that I'm not sure how they would handle that that passing do you think the they'll torch? just let it keep going let her create without actually giving her the, the title of head perfumer um because it, it, it seems like she's creating quite a bit like i, I went into for and looked at everything that she's been credited and is and, and and they've gone back and credited her with her some some things that i wasn't aware of you know when i had reviewed guerlain louis I had given it five stars right when it was released. And I, from what I had known, thought it was a Thierry Wasser creation. And then going back years, I've never updated my review, but I had learned that it was Delphine Yelks. Yeah. And Wasser's name is not on it at all. And they've gone back and credited her with a lot of the Monger loans. Yes. Which is very um, interesting. So I'm sure there's more to this story um, than we are aware of. There's more that's going to develop from this. And it's only a matter of time before, you know, everything comes out. Yeah. I think that as well, Gerlon has always had, from from especially from reading Gabe's book, Gerlon's always had, um, like, extra help. You know, like Derby wasn't like all Jean Paul. Uh, was it Jean Paul Gillon the last one? That's right. Yeah, D Derby wasn't all his. Samsara wasn't all his. Um, they've always had somebody with them, uh, helping them. So they've always been a team. Um, so Vassar and Gel in that context, Vassar and Gel isn't a huge surprise. The huge surprise is that he's not. He's not what his title suggests. You know, the huge hey, surprise is everything is being kept a secret and nothing is being made public or shared with us. It is it it the thing is is that I've come to know, I've come to notice, I beg your pardon, I've come to notice that um that's what the perfume industry is like. That's that's just what they're like. They're really like unnecessarily secretive and they don't they don't like they don't like um like light being shone you know that they say sunlight is the best bleach it's like they don't like light being shone on their ways well yeah they're getting a negative spotlight negative attention and and maybe no attention is better than that that negativity it's taking away from their fame like it's literally saying Teddy Wasser is getting fired or or lost his position. Nobody ever wants to admit that. So maybe he'd be like, you know, I'd rather hear no news than this news. But I wonder yeah, how Del no news feels like news. that. Like if she is the head head perfumer there, doesn't don't you think that she'd want that recognition? She'd want to be known as that. Like, wouldn't I don't she think there's a I don't right? think there's a culture of that. I don't think there's a culture of that in perfume houses recognition. Um, I think there's. I think it's of the the hardworking, the well, hardworking. I mean, non, every house non... has their head perfumer. You know, Chanel has Olivier Polge, uh, Dior had Demache, and now they have FK. Uh, you know, Hermes has Nigel. They all. The, everybody's recognized from the big houses that do have 
a head perfumer. And I don't see why Delphine Jelk or Yelk wouldn't want to be recognized for the same thing. Being from the biggest perfume house in the world, who would? I don't think it's. I don't think it's. uh, I don't think there's a there's a a very strong culture of that in uh, perfume houses, in perfumery about recognition. I think if your name's not on the brand, then I don't think that. Uh, that's why Marl is so different. They put the perfumer's name on everything. Um, right. Look at Creed. Creed. That's that's how Creed managed to get away with what he got away with. His name's on the bottle. You know, if you ask, if you asked, right? Here's a, here's a case. Here's a case in point, right? If you would ask the average person in the street who made Coros, they would say Yves Saint Laurent. Um. Well, because yeah, that's, that's right. The average that's... person doesn't care. You you got to remember, we're like the point zero one nerds that exactly that eat up all this. And only we care about. Only the ninety people here care about this shit. There's not many people that are interested. This is the stuff that um, we eat up. But I mean, if there was no culture, why would Dior and Hermes and and Chanel have named them? Ma- like, how do we know who their perfumers are? Unless they had told us. Well, Chanel's different. Chanel's only ever had four. Um, and Chanel doesn't... Chanel isn't part of the... Their perfume site, the side of their perfume, right? Like, you've seen that Lagerfeld... I think it was you that told us. That Lagerfeld uh, interview where he said, I have nothing to do with the perfumes. That's um, right. So the perfume perfume side of chanel has always been their Separate. own thing yeah, yeah. which makes sense um, because it's a different industry exactly like chanel's chanel's perfumes are there to enhance the brand um rather than be the brand you know right um their philosophy on perfume is slightly different from most other uh houses whereas you go to somewhere like um even Dior, look at all the all the Dior releases in the last thing. They've really pushed like their profit. They're like they're profiting hugely from all their perfumes that they're producing. Their perfume arm is is huge. And you look at you look at the release of Dior arm, right? That was brought in under Heidi Slamani, right? As as the Dior arm, the perfume was brought in under Heidi Slamani under the same umbrella as like the Dior arm line of clothes. You know, that was that all came out at the right. Like your that all came out at the same time, right? Chanel doesn't do that, right? Chanel right. just does not do that. Well, I think that's right? the first time that Dior had done it as well. Exactly, but Chanel still never done it. Director. That's something yeah. that he has power to do. Yeah. So, I mean, whoever's in charge, I don't know who's in charge of the clothes at Chanel, but they could say we could release this perfume with these clothes and make like a big thing of it. But it's not. It's a, it's a it's a totally separate thing. These designers separate. are designers for clothes like Balenciaga. Balenciaga's massively into clothes now. Like the, the, the name the last Balenciaga release. Like no perfume clue. was. Perfume was exactly. Know. I don't it was like women's perfumes, I think they still do. Yeah. I don't even think they have a men's line now. It's bonkers. It's mad to think. Like it's just it's it's strange that. It's strange that that from from the where 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 we are looking, our aspect is different to their aspect. Why do you think that is? Because we're enthusiasts. Where we love the perfume. Like I don't wear Chanel clothes. I don't have any desire to buy a bag. Like I don't have any desire to to buy like Chanel sunglasses or Tom Ford sunglasses. Or right. Tom Ford suit. Like I don't right. buy into the lifestyle aspect of it. I'm just concerned with the perfume. Right. right? I get and that. if you I ask if you that. if you ask if you ask the average person in the street, right, who designs Tom Ford's uh you, who designs Tom Ford's suits that say Tom Ford? Right. Who owns yeah. Tom Ford? Who owns Tom Ford? Tom Ford owns Tom Ford. You know, because right. his name's yeah. on his name's on the bottle, his name's on the package, right. his name's on the thing. It's like Tom Ford design. Tom Ford must be so creative. He must make all those perfumes himself. Tom Ford does not sit anywhere 
and and then it comes as a shock to people and then they'll go all right yeah well that makes sense once they've been like told about it for us we we know when we see tom ford on a bottle what that means is it's an aesthetic not necessarily a, like an, a product you know the aesthetic you're going to get from tom ford you don't necessarily know what the exact product's going to be mm. you know but don't you um, think it's important for a brand like Guerlain to have a head of state, somebody to make all the decisions, to name a head perfumer, to make it clear, to have well, the that, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. But what the, what I would say is right. What I would say to you is is that here's here's another question I'll bring into it: Is Thierry Vassa a better perfumer than Delphine Gel? Should Thierry Vassa not be the one spending the time in the laboratory or at home or wherever he does it? making perfumes rather than going out and saying to somebody who isn't as good as he is right you make the perfumes right and i'll just fly around the world meeting people and then and discovering ingredients should terry vassa being as good as he is not be doing that job maybe you know? he's a better sorcerer than anyone else uh, well yeah I mean, but then maybe. but then should they not have a better perfume like like what um like what chanel do Chanel have got Christopher Sheldrake sourcing the materials and then Olivia Pulse blending them. Right. Two master perfumers, two head, like two top, top perfumers, right? Should Guerlain, who has a longer history than Chanel, right? Who has made as many, if not more, classics than Chanel. Because they're both right, they're, they're neck and neck. They're um, one and two, one and two, two and one. Yeah, right. yeah. They're neck and neck with each other. Um, as as like perfume houses go, even though Chanel, even though Guerlain's turned a bit scattergun with all its different releases recently, you know how it's just releasing so many things and like a lot of it doesn't stick. Um, as far as like releasing like certified platinum standard perfumes, Guerlain and Chanel are like right up there with each other. Um, should Guerlain not follow the Chanel model and have two? Have two top top perfumers in there, rather than rather than one in Thierry Vasser and then and I don't want to call her an underling, but like somebody who's like his he's superior to Delphine Jelk, you know. And that could just be an age thing. That could just be because that could just be. Well, he is a superior. He's the head perfumer. She's not the well, head. Well, he perfumer, used so to he be at some time. We really don't know. Like we're we're assuming here. We're we're guessing what's happening behind the scenes by adding little pieces of stories, you know, from here and here, we, we nothing's ever been brought to our attention in a, a very truthful way. Nobody's come out and admitted anything, you know, we're kind of trying to assemble the puzzle here and we don't have all the pieces, right? Yes. Well, that's what that speaks back to is the secrecy in the perfume industry, the unnecessary amount of secrecy in the perfume industry. It's like that. It's like they're scared about being found out about something. That's right. You know what I mean. It's like, like there's what, a little what bit are the here. There, there's fear of embarrassment or pride getting in the way, and nobody really wants to say anything. But what I'm saying is, why? You know, I can understand why Terry hasn't said he's either been relieved or he stepped down or he's moving on. But I, I get that. That side of you know shame and guilt and fear. But why? On the other hand, doesn't Delphine want to stand up and say, you know, I'm the head perfumer here. I want to be acknowledged and recognized for that. Because who wouldn't? You know, when Terry was the head perfumer, he was very proud and he wanted to be acknowledged for that. You know, totally when, when right. your hired Francis could have gone, they, they made a huge announcement, right? And, and Francis was very proud of that. Why, why doesn't Delphine stand up and say, you know, I want my acknowledgement. I want to be noticed. Just the same way as any other head could just, be, could just be as simple as like office politics. Like if she turns around, right? If she turns around and says, I am the head perfumer, I do this, I do that, the brand or whoever's in charge, or even Thierry Vassa could turn around and say, Why have you said that? You weren't supposed to say that. I'm in charge. That's disrespectful. <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere around here if you talk like okay. that, if you if you're prone to outbursts. That could it's, be the thing, but like again, I'm speculating. It's it's not for her to announce her own position, but why doesn't Guerlain come out and, and clear the air or name her the master perfumer? 
You know, there's this no, is your there's laundry. No pressure, there's no pressure to do it. There's no pressure to do it. There's absolutely no incentive or pressure or need for them to do that whatsoever. They just there carry isn't. on. You're, you're absolutely right, but it causes confusion. Do you think by them avoiding it is them covering something up as well? Do you think it, that it they're aware them. of um, any kind of you know disgruntlement? I think it leaves them open to that accusation, whether it's true or not, is another thing. But like I said before, sunlight's the best, the best bleach. Sunlight, like if you just let the sun shine and just let the truth out and just and just say, yeah, somebody said, yes, Delphine probably signed an NDA. They probably want Thierry Vassett to sign an NDA if he leaves. You know what I mean? Don't tell them the secrets of Girl On. Don't tell them about all the infight and the office fights, who slept with who, who, who fucking hates who, who did this, who did that. You know what I mean? No, but because it would affect the brand when you're in when you're a look when you you're a luxury brand like that. Those little things are so right. You don't want those because, to come to light, do they? Because it's about it's a black mark on the brand. Yeah, it's it's very true what they say as well. You know, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation and a second to destroy it. Right? You right. can you make one you make one wrong step, right? And you can absolutely destroy a brand. That's why a lot of people won't touch Chanel because they say she was a Nazi uh, collaborator. You know, that's right. Yeah, um, they, they told um, what's his name, the dude we were just talking about, not to go there, not to Carl Lagerfeld, not to touch Chanel. Don't go there; they're a dead brand, and he's the one that brought him back to life. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Uh, the, the 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 Chanel. I mean, Chanel was Chanel was on its ass. It was completely finished when Lagerfeld joined. Um, and he joined in 1984, uh, for three years after Antaeus, but he had nothing to do with the perfume. We would say Antaeus, Antaeus, and then uh, Coco, which came out in '84 itself. Lagerfeld had nothing to do with those two of the best Chanel perfumes ever produced. Well, he's very to openly sit. said that he's got nothing to do with perfume. So, so who, right? Who is the, like because Chanel, because Antaeus and Coco are very Chanel perfumes, right? I think we could both agree with that. The fit with the, the brand aesthetic completely. So, who was it? If it wasn't Lagerfeld, who was it? Or was it just Jacques Polge thinking, I know what the fashion looks like and I know. How I want the Chanel mat. Chanel don't make anything for men, do they? Like clothes wise. I don't know. Like nothing. Nothing. I don't if follow the knows, fashion. Audrey, 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 Audrey Jane will know. Um, Chanel don't make anything for men. I don't I don't know that they ever have. Um, but they make perfume for men. Right. Um, it's bonkers. It's it's like it's like how how does how does Chanel know what the Chanel man should smell like because that's like the Dior home. Um, Audrey well, Jane says no. The they, they 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 make it. They don't align it with the Chanel man. They just line what society is is kind of going through at that moment in time. Well, Rudy says that Rudy says that Chanel barely make anything for men. And Audrey Jane says, no, they don't make anything for men. So whatever it is, and Fida says that they don't have a men's clothing line. So whatever it is, right? Right. Um, whatever it is that they make, it's very, very, very like limited and small. And compared to the perfume line. Wallets and belts and maybe shoes I, or something. Yeah, Probably compared not. to that perfume line, um it, it's 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 Compared to that perfume line, that clothing line for men is almost is basically not non-existent. You know, mm. that perfume line for men is like thirty to forty percent of that overall perfume, if you don't count the less exclusives. Um, if you don't count the less exclusives, because they're unisex, they're not targeted to men or women. But the female perfumes are about sixty to seventy percent of what they offer, right? And their male perfumes are about thirty to forty percent what they offer. But as clothes-wise, it's ninety-nine percent women's clothes, and maybe one percent, maybe one percent men's clothes. Um, right. So what you're saying is, where does Jacques Poles get the idea of what 
what creates Bang- the, the sh- I'm sure they then. have a marketing team that works with him very closely and they say, all right, we're going to make this smell like every other masculine scent on the market, which is patchouli and oak moss and, and, and you think, smoke yeah, wood. Do you think that he, do you think that he, he sort of, do you think that he sort of like gives them five perfect, like, like, like Chanel did with like uh, number five. Yeah. yeah I uh, Ernest, Bo, Ernest Bo, Ernest Bo literally just went, here's 25 perfumes, pick the ones you like. And she yeah. went number five because it's my birthday without even yeah. smelling it. She went yeah, number that, five because it's my birthday. That's not an outrageous idea. I think, I think it might, I think it, it, it makes as much sense as anything else. Right. Um, it makes as much sense as anything else. So, I mean, what's going on, you know? Well, I think it's only going to take, it's it's like a matter of time before this all plays out. And truth always, always comes out, right? You you can, you can be dishonest or hide stuff for as long as you want. But in the end, you know, the stories always come, the truth comes to the light. You know, just like the same way the Creed stories, they took decades and generations but they finally, they finally came to truth, and and, and this is um, no different than any of those. It's only a matter of time. Yes, I what would you, agree. Yeah, it'll come out. It'll come out one at one point. Right. It might not be in our lifetime, but eventually it'll come out. There's there's people that are very close to the situation, and one day they might not be with Gerlon anymore, and they see every day what's happening, and and they might they might speak. We don't know. Right, not everybody yeah. signed to an NDA. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the other. NDAs. Sorry. Let's let's talk about the other story. What do you think about um, Jean Paul Guerlain and and what's going on with him and and his elder abuse story? So, it, so I'll tell you what I think. First off, we need to say this is alleged at the minute because this is literally an ongoing, like, criminal investigation into a man who is a lawyer. So if we say anything, like, be careful, seriously. Like, if we say anything, right. be careful. This is alleged, but the French authorities... We don't know the have... facts, only what we've read on the internet. Yes, and I read it on Kafkaesque, the blog. And Kafkaesque is a, a high-flying attorney in America. So that woman well, she knows just what copied the story about. from another website. Like yeah, but she, she she's not going to print anything like that's going to get a libel, is she? Yeah, no. she's not going to print anything that, that made a light bulb. But if it turns out to be true, then it's absolutely outrageous on a human level. It's fucking horrible, right? <laughs> that I mean, the bloke must be the, the bloke must be earning a fair penny himself, and there must be enough money to go around. You know, girl on is girl on's a massive business, and he sold it for a large amount of money, and it it carries his name, and he must get royalties. You know, he must still get right. There must be plenty of money coming in to reduce him to one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and fifty euros a week for food, for making him fucking like, for making him like live in squalor and shit, and not letting him get married to another woman. I understand that. That's a, that's that's a human political thing. Doesn't want to spread the inheritance. That's what that is. If he marries this woman, he's got Alzheimer's. I would. I must admit, if my mother was eighty five and some and she was rich. And wealthy, and some bloke came along who was 20, 30, 40 years younger than her and was like, I want to marry her. I'd be like, Yeah, of course you do, son. Fuck off. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Of course, you, of course you fucking want to marry her. I'm not surprised you want to marry her. I'm going to be dead soon. But and you she's wouldn't got turn Alzheimer's. off her electricity or, or put shit I wouldn't dog turn off the electricity and put in fucking shit in her shoes. No. I'd tell the other bloke where he could fucking go. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't, but not the own mother. I mean, what the fuck? There must be some serious fucking self-loathing and like parental issues going on there for someone to do that to like the the, right. the parent, you know. Somebody somebody right. asking us what the story is. Let's remind them what the story is. Well, I could read. I could read it off the blog if you want. Or you could just read way it too long. The... I'd rather not. Just give us a recap. Go on, then I'll let you do it. All right. So allegedly. Jean-Paul Guerlain is saying that he's being abused by his son and um, he's not allowing him to do certain things. And Jean-Paul has dementia and Alzheimer's and the son has came in and, and 
kind of took his allowance away and he leaves him with 133 euros a week for food and, and has turned off the electricity in their house and turn off the heat, canceled the internet, doesn't feed the horses. They have some kind of horses and they don't have enough money to vaccinate the horses and feed them. He's, he's put dog shit in their shoes. I read that. Apparently he's like slapped him around, doesn't allow his father to get married to this woman. So it's just very, it's um, psychological abuse, physical abuse. It's allegedly as well. It is. This is all right. alleged. We don't know this. Um, won't, won't doesn't have any money. Jean Paul Caron doesn't have access to any of his money. I, I guess his son is. He's got the power of attorney to 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 all of this. So this is just something that's broke in the last couple of days. Yeah. So power of attorney is where somebody is given the the responsibility of taking major financial decisions, um, major, major decisions about someone all else's decisions. life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. All decisions where money and, um, where money and self, like self preservation and, and like doing what's best for yourself is taken away from you and given to someone else. Uh, in this case, you would think a safe bet would be that person's son. Uh, Stefan Gerlach. Right. Um, it is, but we've got to say it, he's been indicted by the French police, so it's got to the point where he's been charged with it. Like, it's not just allegations, it's well, actually I'm, like he's, he's up in court. The interesting thing is the man himself is a lawyer, so you would Ooh. assume that he has some sort of sense. Of what? Of what? This goes, yeah, that's like what I'm saying. Outrageous that's behavior. What that's what I'm saying. It's um, it's something must have gone seriously wrong at some point. Um, something's gone seriously wrong at some point for the son, a son, to do that to their father. It um, it almost seems like he's trying to protect his father's money from his girlfriend. Yeah, but the, it's the, abu it's the abuse. Married. It's the abuse. Um, it's it's the abuse. That's the it's it's not the it's not the stopping them trying to get married. <laughs> I understand that. Um, what? It's why does it seem like there's always some sort of drama surrounding the girl on name? Because they're a French family. It's a family thing. <laughs> but so they're a family Chanel. thing. Yeah, that's what it is. It's yeah, no, it's not. There's no, there's no Chanel's alive today. All right, yes, no, no, no living members, right? But they're a French brand. They're a French brand. No, I said they're a French family. They're a family. Yeah, that's it. Wasn't the name the 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 the, so the, the, the accent stuff wasn't dragged through the mud. Yeah, it's it's family stuff. It's not that they're French. When I said they're a French family, I really what I should have said was it's because they're a family. Mm. Um. I didn't mean to say it was because they were a French family. It's because they're a family. And this this is the type of shit that unfortunately happens in a lot of families. Right. Um, and it's, it's not just pleasant. stuff being dragged out. Yeah. But it's not even... The per it's it's also like in... in Like, not only with Jean-Paul Guerlain, but it's also with Basset and Yelk. There's always something going on with the Guerlain name, with the brand. So Stefan, the son, is 61 and will face criminal charges at a hearing in Versailles next week. He was awarded legal control of his father's finances in 2018. The charges Stefan faces are, in Mason's words, willful violence, moral harassment, making death threats, and subjecting a vulnerable person to housing conditions incompatible with human dignity. Um, so the article notes that Kra, which is the Danish woman that Mr. Gerlon wants to marry, and the elder Gerlon have had relatively, relatively strict restrictions placed on their activities and the amount of money that they have access to. Stefan's lawyer, Pascal Kurfer, was skeptical of Kra's account of events. Mrs. Kra thinks that it's 
she can justify the unjust, unjustifiable by multiplying outrageous and shocking penal procedures with systematic recourse to media. Apparently, she's gone straight to the media with it. Like that's why it's come out. Mm, um, bring it attention, maybe to speed it up in the courts. Yeah, you know, no, no doubt she wants access to the money, and 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 the son's got all the control. Very much yeah. reminds us of Britney Spears' situation where Britney's father had control of all of her money and she was left with a very small allowance. She said there were days mm. she couldn't put gas in her car, you know. And yeah. to think Britney Spears, one of the biggest pop stars of our time, didn't have enough money mm. to put gas in her car. So that's that is that is mental to not give her a thousand dollars a week at least. You know what I mean? I mean that. Yeah. I mean she's a multi, 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 multi millionaire. She's an extremely wealthy woman. But on the other side of it, you I remember when Britney Spears had that breakdown, like, um, yeah, and she it was it was no, that the breakdown yeah, you're yeah, talking. Yeah, about? yeah, that. But there's apparently there's like that. That was she had the breakdown and then she suffered with mental health problems since then. Um. But That's got to be understandable that... coming from a young teen. You know, she was probably just a young young child at the time. Had two I kids. Totally she understand. got married. I totally understand why she would have mental health problems and have a breakdown. Um, and you've got to remember as well, these, these procedures are put in place around the world, in America, in Canada, in Britain, in France, in Germany. And, and like, you know, it, it's a sensible thing to do in a lot of cases, and it's not nice. But to not give Britney Spears or Jean-Paul Guerlain enough money so that they can actually have a nice, happy life. Right. Like, it's yeah. like, I mean, or, or even to pay, even to use their own money to provide them with, like, care. Bare essentials. Yeah, not even just bare essentials, but like, like medical care. Britney Spears yeah. should have access to the finest psychologists in the world with that kind of money. Right. You know, like seriously, like, like, like why aren't they using that money to make their lives better? Like it, it, it doesn't, if I was a multi, 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 if money was no object and my mom had like a mental breakdown or if like your daughter had a mental breakdown, one of your kids and they were worth all that money, and you had access to that money, one of the best things you could do with that money would be medical care. Surely. And yet right. it wasn't, and yet it wasn't, and yet it wasn't like high on the high on the agenda. John Paul Guerlain got Alzheimer's, got dementia. Why hasn't he got like a nursing team living at home, helping him live in his, in his big family house? Like spend thousands of dollars a week on that, you know? Like that's the best use of his money at the time. It's not even it's not just... providing medical care, which you know medical bills can add up and get quite expensive. It's like he had he had shut down their internet, which should be everybody in the world today has internet access, right? Yeah, in Finland, do you know in Finland that the internet access is a human right? <laughs> internet access heading that way, right? They're talking it's about getting, implanting isn't... chips into our brain. Yeah, they're saying that. the cell phone is slowing us down. That's exactly what Elon Musk wants to do. He says we're already cyborgs. You know, the cell I mean, phone he's is a, a, he's a of us. cyborg. It's just got to be less. Why? Why is it that fucking Elon Musk, who has come out and said that he's got Asperger's himself, so it's not like I'm just throwing it out there. But Elon Musk is on the autistic spectrum, and he's trying to tell other human beings how to live. Social, like affect the social lives. Elon Musk doesn't understand social interaction as well as like somebody who doesn't have Asperger's, right? He understands numbers. He understands technology. He understands how to do um, computer stuff. He understands inventions. To tell humans how to fucking interact with each other wouldn't be taking that off somebody who's on the autistic spectrum. Because well, that's the literally thing. what the autistic. That's literally what the autistic. Like, uh, like, that's what like the autistic. Like, right. not temperament. What is it? Like, that's that's what the condition is. 
you know, I, I, like I get, I get you what you're saying and, and we should be interacting with each other more, but as a society, we're interacting with each other less and we want to be alone and we want to stimulate ourselves. And that's exactly what he's fulfilling. He's just trying to provide faster stimulation for us where you don't have to do a Google search of Gerlon Santal Pauroso. If you want to do research, that's what implementing the chip is. So it just kind of automatically happens. So well, we have Elon Musk, Elon Musk, Elon Musk wants people to be more like him. Elon Musk wants you to be more like him. And, and we I don't want, want to be. We, the people as a society want to be more like him because we're buying into these products. You know, by buying into this, as we're saying, we're accepting of whatever it is is coming our way with AI, with, with artificial I think, I think I don't necessarily think that it's accepting. I think that it's we want the opportunity to do that, what we want with that technology. Um, you look at augmented reality, Zuckerberg, he's another person, right? I don't know this about Mark Zuckerberg, and I'm not a doctor, right? But no one can tell me that fucker isn't on the autistic spectrum as well. All you've got to do is look at his face. Look, listen to the way he talks. Listen, look at the way he holds his body, right? Yeah. That man That man has like a, that man has like a, a neurological... Like he looks condition. uncomfortable with himself. Yeah, exactly. He, he hates, and you can just see he's dying to fucking not be where he is, but he has to be for his purposes, right? He doesn't want to be in the media. He doesn't want to be talking to people, but he has to because they are they are a way for him to advance his purposes. I don't want to know about human interaction from a man who doesn't know about human interaction in the first place. Somebody said here on the air uh, in the chat that. um Elon Musk knows how to win knows how to inherit an emerald mine. Exactly. Blokes fucking blokes rich as fuck from the day he was born. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of the fucking um one of the top universities in the entire world and stole Facebook uh, allegedly. I, I right? don't know about that. He uh, allegedly it was uh it was it might him not have been his idea, idea, but he's the one that programmed the idea. No, I totally agree with you. Yeah, but he took it. You know what I mean? It's like it's he like took the idea. Yeah, yeah, he took yeah. the idea. That's what I said allegedly. Um, but it's 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 like it's like like I'm not going to be following the advice of these people when it comes to certain things. Like that's you might it. not you have people... a choice, or you're just going to be left behind. I'll, well, I'll, I'll be left behind. I'll go my own way. <laughs> You're gonna be on I'll your own. Left. A lot I'll of us. You know, I'd rather be. I'd rather agree with you. I don't like the course of the future, but we, we we're not gonna have a choice. I think we will have a choice. I think that I think that I've I've got where I've got in life so far without having Facebook, and it's almost what the what the idea is. Right? Is it's the fear of missing out, and so it's like everybody else. So what it feels like everybody else doesn't have Facebook, right? But if you would actually see how many active so people who have used Facebook in the last year, it's much it's it's less than half the population. Like Facebook right. now is seen is seen as something that's for old people, right? Do you think like it's because Facebook, the competition is bigger now? There's Instagram, yes. there's TikTok, there's um, email. People are addicted to email. There's YouTube. There's just so many other uh, facets of social media that. People are less people are on Facebook because of that. Yes, just so I also options. think as well. I also think there's a huge problem with plurality. There's our that screen. There's well, yeah, but there's a problem with plurality in that one company owns too many of the one company owns too many of the of the uh, of each of each company like WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook. That's their way of the same company. That's their way of staying on top. Is buying. I know, but it shouldn't brand. be allowed. I know it's a allowed, government they're thing. Being allowed, who's going to stop them? Well, that's what you speak the. Uh, that's what you speak the uh, politicians about. You and should that's speak why about in bed with the politicians to prevent that from ever happening. Exactly, exactly. So what you that's what, and then what you get is you get people arguing with the competition. You get people arguing with the politicians about shit like masks. You know what I mean, and shit like vaccinations. Instead, it's all fucking distraction from what's actually happening around you. You know. The, yeah. the, the silent creep, the desert creep of technology and the future, you know, it's very, very strange. It's a very strange world we'll live in. 
well, we're all addicted to some form of technology. It's just like we're all addicted to consuming as much information as we possibly can. And I don't know what to do with this information. Like once we learn it, now what? All right, we've got the information. Now what? What do we do with this? How do we make ourselves better with all this information? It's just absorb it, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's just right. Consume, it's just to kill consume, time, consume. the past time, and 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 and, and to, avoid, to avoid the human aspect of it. It's like to avoid our loneliness and existentialism. It's like let's drown ourselves in this information and not think about the things that truly do matter. Yeah, it is. Let's not work totally. on deeply fulfilling relationships let's avoid those too that's another thing that's another it's just too hard that's the promise of stuff like facebook and tinder and and what technology and, is and the new it's it's the new drug you know the, the it's the new meth it's the new cocaine it's the new street drug that that new york plagued in in the 80s it's now technology and it's in everybody's household you know it's not a street drug that you got to go into the alley to find right now it's right in front of you with your kids your family it's everywhere it's a software as well i remember that line um i remember that line one of the only good lines from a uh, terminator 3 um the fuck that was fucking awful such a terrible movie but it said that um Skynet, like the uh, the um, the thing that controlled all the like the Terminators and the robots, it wasn't it wasn't anything other than software, and that's what it is. It's it's the thinking part. It's it's not the it's not the chip. It's not the chip you want to be worried about. It's the it's the process in your mind of allowing them to put a chip in you. That's what you want to be worried about. It's the it's the software. It's the thinking part. It's the moving parts of your mind, the neurons in your mind where you where you can justify to yourself, um, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get the chip. You know what I mean? And I speak yeah. of somebody who's had all three vaccines and frankly, I'm expecting a call to get a fourth. Um and so it's but my 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 justification for that is based on different justification to like you, like or or anybody else, you know. There are some people who might just think, well, I'm going to have one. Or there might be some people who think, I'll have two. Or some people who think, I'm not having any. Or like me, where every time they offer us one, I'm probably going to pick it up because my circumstances are different. And people, this is the thing about Facebook as well. It removes your individuality while making you feel as though you are more of an individual than ever. Because, yeah. you, are easy, because you are much, much, much more easily influenced Right, I am less in. I am less. It is less easy to influence me because I don't have Facebook, because I don't have Instagram, because I don't have all these other social medias than it is to influence somebody who is. But somebody who has got Facebook, Instagram, and all these things will sit and tell you, "I've got wider choice than you," and it's just that's that's not that's not how it works. It both what both of the statements can be true. Right, that you can be more, you can have more choice, but have less choice at the same time. Right, the 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 the, the choice and the opportunity isn't yours; it's theirs. When you download Facebook, when you get Facebook, right? When you download Facebook and you download Instagram and you download all these apps, right? They're free, right? And the yeah. reason, the reason that they're free is because you are the product. When something is free, you the person who is receiving the free product are the product. So Facebook uses your information and your data as a product, right? And they sell it for money to other companies who then use that data to produce things to sell to you, right? They don't have my data because I'm not on there. And it's my choice not to do that. I have made that choice. And it's usually that original first choice that you make that defines where you are in the greater scheme of things. 
So what do we do run. going forward? As, you know, not everybody is going to be like you and decide not to have social media. I imagine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is, there's, you know, there's like you're huge... one of the rare few. Yes, there's a huge thing about um, doing uh, like retrieving data about how people behave on mass. You know, and, it's it's you... about behavioral analytics. How do you feel about the whole missing out? Like, you know, don't I you don't... ever wonder like what's going out there in this social universe? What am I missing? Nope. nope. Why is I that? Don't how do you know. how do you prevent because, yourself from missing out? Because I don't feel like I am missing out. Um, okay. I observe other pe I observe other people, right, and their lives, their their real lives. My judgment tells me that their lives are fucking no better. In fact, they are worse than mine because of all this online social interaction. So I use my judgment. People don't trust their own judgment. A lot of people can't trust themselves, like to just say, "Look, fuck that." And I think as well, the earlier you start on Facebook, if you just take it for granted, well, of course I've got a Facebook group. The amount of times I've said over the last twenty years, well, not twenty years, fifteen years, when people have said, "Oh, like, 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 oh, like, what's your Facebook page? I'll find you on Facebook," and I'm like, "No, I won't," and they've literally stopped in their tracks and just been like, "What?" And it's like, no, I don't want Facebook. I'm not going on Facebook. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because everybody who's everybody I know who's on Facebook is fucking miserable. All they ever do is talk about the shit that happens on Facebook. They're never like something great happened on Facebook the other day. They're like, oh my god, I got into an argument with someone on Facebook. Or they're like, or they're like, oh, I've just had an argument with someone, or I just saw a post on Facebook that pissed us off. Nobody's ever like, Facebook changed my life for the better, you know? But isn't isn't Facebook just really a, a a continuation of what society is like we're no different in real life you go to your your communities you know you go to your church your civic community your schoolyard your your racket club it's isn't it just a continuation of that just you know you take it from real life into the internet area no, I no, think you're talking about the it. same things. That's... You're 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 trashing the same people, making fun of the nope. same things. It's it's pretty much the same lifestyle, just in an nope. easier, more accessible, more functional, you know, pretend world, really, an online nope. world. No, I think it's fundamental. I think it's fundamentally different. I think it's fundamentally different. How is that? that it's because, it because you don't, don't have to face the person in real life. Like I can say, you know, I can say, you know what, Rich Mitch, I fucking hate that guy. He's got horrible taste in perfume and he smells like an old man and that's online. But, you know, if I were to ever come to him face to face, I'd never say something like that to him because I'm not sure that's what would happen. I'm pretty sure I know what would happen. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's like, right, it's like Mike right, Tyson right. said. You know what I'm it's saying? Like Mike Tyson, yeah, the, the point is Mike Tyson made a really good point, right? And it, you can strip, you can bear it back. You can, you can strip back what he says even further. But Mike Tyson said, social media has got people to the point where they feel like they can say anything without getting punched in the face for it. Yeah. What you could take that, what you can do is you can take that, you can reduce it further and say that, the internet and social media has got people to the point where they do not face consequences for their actions. Right. Right. There is no, there is like, it's broken. Social media has broken the yeah, whole you cause can hide and effect. Under an avatar. It's not, yeah, but the, it's more basic than that. It's, it's cause and effect, right? It's literally cause and effect. It's broken the, the relationship between cause and effect. So you can say fucking anything you want on social media and it can be picked up like a whirlwind, right? And just gone out there and, and all of a sudden everyone's calling me a fucking pedophile, right? You've never right. touched a fucking child. You've never fucking done any such thing, right? But now everybody thinks that you have, right? And these two things are completely separate from each other. Whereas if you say that in real life to someone, right, people will challenge it. People will challenge you. People will say, no, you're talking shit. Whereas on the internet, all you need to do is get enough people to fucking agree with you. And it's a different, it is, it, it's fundamentally different from real life and the internet is, funda is fundamentally different from each other for these reasons. 
the, in, the, the, the internet companies like Facebook, like Twitter, like Instagram have an incentive not to not harm you for saying and doing outrageous shit because you're a user, because you're a consumer, because you're somebody that they can make money from. So why would they want to then punish you for doing something wrong? Right. Because you're worth, especially if you, especially if you've got like a follow up that PewDiePie, the amount of fucking outrageous shit that fucker's done and said, like, and he's never faced any punishment from it. Even Disney hasn't cancelled him. And I say cancelled, I say cancelled, cancelled the wrong word. He's never faced any sort of like punishment for the shit that he's come out with. Juju, juju. Juju, juju. Yeah, it would be crazy to cancel him. Can you imagine how much backlash would they face? Can you imagine how much money they would lose? Bollocks to the backlash. It's money. You know what I mean? <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> it's bollocks. It's, it's, it's bollocks to the money. Bollocks to the fucking backlash. It's the money that they would lose. Well, you know? It's almost like a form of bullying online where you don't have to face any consequences. You know, if you, if you, if you do that in real life... People are going to come at you, you know, the schoolyard bully. He's going to get, he's going to get, he's going to get suspended. He's going to be, the, the bully himself is going to face repercussions. What about online though? If you go and you bully somebody. It's, it you doesn't, know, yeah, it basically there's depends no consequences how, how you do to it. it. You, you can come online, yeah. hide behind an avatar and pretty much say whatever you want about anybody you want. There's, there's also the complete opposite can be true. Somebody can be cancelled for something outrageous that they've said, and there's no way back for them. There's no right? way why. And it's like, there's no way back for them, right? There's no retribution. There's no, not retribution. There's no, um, there's no, like, forgiveness. Okay. There's no sort of, like, there's no sort of, um, what is it when somebody's rehabilitation, once you're gone from the internet, you're gone. You know, like yeah. if, if like say if PewDiePie with all the racist shit that he's come out come out with before. And has he has, he? I, I don't I don't follow Yeah, he has, he has said yeah, there are videos of him saying the N word, there are videos really of him playing games, playing games and using the N word, and it's just slipped out and you can tell <laughs> that that's like that's you can just tell that he, flip, you can just tell it? that that's actually like the way he feels, but he knows yeah, he can't that say doesn't it, just, just slip, a, right? Like N word N word with the hard R as well. You know, so he's not just copy. He's not just parroting right. it from. Um, he's not just parroting it from like uh, rap songs. He's yeah. using the hard R. So right. he's he's learned that he's learned that from like a white person. Put it like that, and um, and and he never fit fa- like like he was he was censured. He was told off, and it was like as if it was as if nothing had happened. You know, um, it's it's. It's not. Yeah, there's it's no not, repercussions to face. Yeah, there's no repercussions. But then you've got somebody who, you've got somebody who, right? Say if, say if, like, the thing is with him, it wasn't a one-off. If He'd anything, it'll shit probably, like this it'll, it'll probably make his fan base bigger and bring more attention to his brand, wouldn't it? Because now more people are talking about him. You know, and that, that comes at that comes at that comes a tipping point. There is a tipping point. There is a tipping point where like. It becomes a web. They say no. They say like all news is good news. Like there's no such thing as yeah, bad publicity. Right, that does right. come. That does come a tipping point. Like there actually does. Where there's a there's a point where you can you can absolutely fuck yourself. There was a um there was a jewelry brand. There was a jewelry brand in Britain. This was twenty twenty five years ago, and the bloke the CEO was in charge of the jewelry brand. And he, I swear to God, this is true. I can't remember what it was. Right. But the bloke got up on stage, gave a speech, and said that the jewelry that his company made was crap and he would never buy it. <laughs> well, that's no different right. than Steve Jobs saying he'd never give his son an iPad. Exactly. Right? But the thing is, the thing is, right, his brand, his brand, right, his brand, like, they sacked him immediately, almost immediately, right, and the sales, I think the company went out of business. You know? Yeah. So should there not have been – should there not have been – like that company was that company employed a lot of people, made a lot of money, right, and was perfectly fine until he said that. Should there not have been an in between? 
should there not have been an in-between between him saying that and the company going out of business or him losing his job or being sad? I mean, it's outrageous for a CEO to say that. It's hard to see how he could have stayed on. But at the well, same time, the company... Something? What was his What was his motivation? Was it to... What was, to what, honestly, it? I've got no idea why he said it. I don't know that we'll ever know why he said it. Um, I'll see if I can find out uh, who's, who it was. You. I'm not sure how he so, got from Terry Wasser to Jean-Paul Guerlain to Britney Spears and Elon Musk to PewDiePie. It's it's, it's just mad. kind of gone. <laughs> we, we've lost track of the conversation. Do you want to talk about perfume? That's okay. No, I don't. I don't mind. You know, I don't mind going off topic. But you know, we can keep going. I'll drop the link if somebody wants to come on and talk about Wasser or or Jean-Paul Guerlain. I'll let them share their thoughts. But you know we can keep we can keep talking about this. I like this. I'm 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 enjoying myself. So if somebody wants to share their opinions or any knowledge of um, Thierry Vassed and uh, kind of relinqu not relinquishing, we heard that um, Gabe had mentioned on on Persilace's interview earlier today that uh, Thierry Wasser was relieved of his duties, which is you know it's news to us and 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 it definitely caught Persilace. You know, Persley was like stuck in his tracks and he was caught off guard and he had to back Gabe up and and ask him to repeat what he had said and to clarify. So very interesting. Very interesting. I've sent you the link. He was called Gerald Ratner and he owned a store chain of um he old he owned a store chain of um British jewelry companies called Ratner's Group, now the Signet Group. He achieved notoriety after making a speech in which he jokingly denigrated two of the company's products. Um, and I'm sure he have to, I'm sure he had the, uh, the speech. Widely regarded as tacky, the shops and their wares were nevertheless extremely popular with the public until Ratner made a speech addressing a conference at the Institute of Directors at the Royal Albert Hall in 1991. During the speech, he commented, we also do cut glass sherry decanters complete with six glasses on a silver plated tray that your butler can serve you drinks on. All for four ninety five. People say, How can you sell this for such a low price? I say because it's total crap. <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre. Was he a disgruntled employee? Why would you come out and talk He owned about the guy ra he owned and ran the company. <laughs> Was he trying to make headlines for himself, like free marketing? No, you know, that, that kind of reminds just, me of like Jeremy saying it only cost him five dollars to make his perfume. It's just a stupid idea. He compounded this by going on to remark that one of the sets of earrings was cheaper than a prawn sandwich from Marks and Spencer's. But I have to say, the sandwich will probably last longer than the earrings that we make. Ratner's comments have become textbook examples of why CEOs should choose their words carefully. In the furore that ensued. Customers stayed away from Ratner shops. After the speech, the value of the Ratner group plummeted by around half a billion pounds. So that's half a billion pounds 30 years ago. Um, Ratner hired a chairman in an attempt to stabilize the situation, but was subsequently fired by the new company leader in 1992. The company then had to change its name. Um, and people making gaffes of the same, like, people... Uh, doing uh, people doing the same sort of things like CEO saying the, the wrong thing has now become known as doing a Ratner um, he absolutely fucked it needless to say don't do that Eugene when you release your brand don't say the shite for God's sake you leave that to me or someone else right. you, sta you stand up for them <laughs> don't you don't you let Damn fucking right. Don't you let a. Uh, I won't let anybody shit. call him shite. I become rolling heads. You're going to see vintage Eugene come back out. Start knocking <laughs> heads off. It's my That's big right. middle finger to the rest of the YouTube community. Have you any? Uh, have you any updates on the brand? People are no. people are keen. Do people wish to know. Nothing. Actually, there's a lot that's happened in in the last week, but um, it's just very. Nothing. Nothing, nothing to report. Insane. Nothing to report. Nice. Got talking with. Uh, <laughs> I got talking with a um, 
a creative writer who's writing the brand story and and they've brought a lot of uh a lot of new ideas and, and, and thoughts and opinions, which I've shared with you. So I don't know if I want to talk about a lot of that. Um, you know what I will say though, is actually, you know what? I don't, I don't want to talk about it. We'll talk about it some other time. We'll just okay. keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll save the brand story. For, I don't want to promote or um, push my own stuff. We'll talk about Wasser and. No problem. Are you going to send free bottles out? <laughs> Here we go. I may send a few, not for promotional purposes. I'm not against it, but I won't be doing what a lot of the other people are doing. Um, but I also don't want, you know, I want, if this is what brands are doing, I don't want to be, um, you know, I don't want to have to play by different rules by anybody else. I don't want to be held back. Um, I want I want the same rights as everybody else. That doesn't necessarily no, mean I'll be using those rights, but you know, I want the same rights everybody has. That's uh it's 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 one of those things I was talking to um someone else who's got their own brand and I was saying like that that like like you've got like a massive you've got like a massive plus in your favor that people are buying into you. You know what I mean? Like you as a person. Mm. Um, and people are buying into the story. The people who have been around for a while know they've seen you on your journey and what you've been up to, what you've been doing, um, how far you've come what you were, what you are, what you're going to be. People people are interested in the future, what you're going to be. And people want to support you, you know? People want to people want to invest. People are invested. Um so the best thing to do is to just like keep being yourself and to keep and to just keep going and be and be be genuine. About yeah. where you're going, and I think I think don't lose contact. Don't forget what has has not because nah, I don't want it to say like that, you know. I don't want it to say like oh, don't sell out, but like remember like the fact that people are invested in you as a person, and it's not just the perfumes, you know. Yeah, I, I definitely sense. feel that. And I, I feel like, you know, as long as I'm being authentic to that voice and that's what I'm sharing opposed to something else, uh, I'll be okay. You know, I can definitely feel the love from everybody. And, uh, you know, it's a good feeling. Um, something that's come come up and I'll share with you is like when I first started this, it was really important for me to have my name on the brand, like to have Eugene on there. That was because that was a name I really struggled with my whole life. Like being younger, I was bullied and made fun of and teased over that name. And I hated it. And I had, you know, such a complex over that name. And it, it, it even, I brought that over into my adult life when I met people and they asked me my name, I was, I would like stop in my tracks and it would like, I didn't know how to respond. And I was like, fuck, I don't want to tell them my name. I'll be made fun of. Like, that was something I really struggled with. And, uh, you know, I eventually overcame that. And I wanted to, it was important for me to use um, my name and my perfumes. And then, you know, the more people you talk to, it's like everybody has an opinion and it's always different than yours. They, people want you to do what they believe is best for you. And some people said, don't use your name. Other people said, yes, use your name. I spoke to people in the industry with brands and were like, Eugene, you got to use your name. Like this is, you know, you're, you're, you're marketing yourself. I think, you know, somebody said to me, cause I originally, I had my name in the brand and then talking to people, they're like, don't, don't use your name. So I took my name out and I put something else in there and I spoke to a brand owner recently and they're like, taking your name, you just cost yourself millions of dollars. And I was like, Really? Like why? You know, because I kind of overcame that whole um, that self doubt over the name. You know, I accepted my name and I love it and I embrace it and I acknowledge it and I'm not I'm no longer like I don't have those feelings anymore. Those feelings of 
you know, I, there was a time where I had shame over my name and, uh, you, you know, just those, those feelings of, uh, as a kid of, of being bullied and, and not accepted over a name. And now it's just like, mm, it doesn't really matter to me as much as it did at one time, you know, um, what's in the name. I don't know. I think as long as I create the best perfumes that I possibly can, um, something that I believe in is, is more important than the marketing behind the brand or the name behind the brand. And, uh, yeah, it's just something that I've, I've come to accept is, is whatever name is on that brand, be it mine or, or like a, a, a self-made name doesn't really matter. And it won't ever have an effect on, on what we're producing. Yeah. So, you know, somebody's always had, somebody has an opinion, um, whatever I do, I know I'll never be able to make everybody happy and I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to create things that I love and I want to share. And I think that are worthy of sharing. And I think people will be uh, pleasantly surprised with, with what's going to be released. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited to share with the world. Yep. I'm excited. I've smelled the, I've smelled the, the first, you do make me happy. The first efforts. The first. The first efforts, I think, are quite good. Oh, my God. I'm parched. Yeah, and that's where we're at. How's the snow? The snow is um, outrageous. I woke up today to 20 inches, 50 centimeters of snow, and I didn't go to work. <laughs> Came up to my knees. It was a nice Hi. surprise. Bonk as that man. Yeah. That's insane. It is uh it is crackers. Absolutely mental. Ooh, excuse me. Um I've had a I've had a parcel stuck in a warehouse for ten days. Um that's 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 been not nerve wracking, but uh it's been a pain in the arse because it's not right. just for me. It's like it's like for two other people, and it's like literally stuck in a warehouse and has been stuck there for ten days. I think I've figured out why it's stuck though. Well, it eventually get to you, and when it does, you'll feel good. You know, it's 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 probably a blessing that it's stuck. It gives you something to look forward to, as long as it doesn't give you anxiety while you're waiting for it. I was anxious for the first few days last week because I was like, I was in touch with the with the <laughs> delivery company, and it was like. I was like, wow. There is fucking comment of the year. <laughs> Floral notes. Damn. <laughs> Some of us would like to wake up to 20 inches. Where's Joey Cannoli? Joey, you know what to do. <laughs> it's uh it's uh, it's quite a gap to fill though. It is right. Well, I mean, 20 inches is going to fill any gap, to be honest. Not a 30-inch gap. 30-inch <laughs> gap. Damn. <laughs> I'm going to fill a 30-inch gap. Big gaps. It's a lot of snow, though. Is it not? Mm. It's a lot of snow. We're blocked in. I drive a four-wheeler, and I still I don't think I'd be able to make it out with a four-wheel drive. Yikes. So what else? What else is going on? It's been a while since we've seen you. Um, you know what? I haven't I, I have bought in something this year. I haven't even mentioned it in the last stream. Um, I bought, and you know why I bought this? I don't know if he's still here. And we had him on last week, Bobby Dior, and I forgot to mention it. But I bought opium poor home from YSL. Outrageous. But I think it is the reform and I haven't gotten the chance to wear it properly, but I was like, I was pleasantly disappointed with it, you know? Pleasantly was, disappointed? Yeah, I was disappointed. Like, not pleasantly. pleasantly. <laughs> not pleasantly. Not pleasantly, but it was a little bit of a disappointment. I like the smell, but it's just like, I wanted more from it, you know? 
I thought it's I, I gotta take it out for a real test drive, but I thought it was gonna like it more than I did. It just felt really soft, much softer than the things that I like. Much softer than 20 inches, let's put it that way. <laughs> and that's that. Otherwise, I haven't really had an urge to go out and buy anything. I just feel very content and I'm I've been enjoying the things that I own and you know, I don't have that. I, I don't at this moment. I, I guess I have a lot going on where I don't have, like, I don't have the the feeling of some kind of voids that I need to fill up. So that's kind of been taking up a lot of my time now. Yeah, I'm trying to cut back on how much I buy. I've bought a couple of things this year. Um, you said you said something them. about sampling more than buying this year. Are you going to stick to that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, I'm not going to buy as much. I've already got like loads of samples. I've got samples off people as well. Um, I got some samples from Ramsey. I got some samples from Fosco, and I attempted to send some samples to Ramsey, but they have gone walkabout. Um, they never got there, so I think they've just been binned. Uh, yeah. I sent them before. I sent them before Christmas, and we're like three weeks into three weeks into the new year. So whether it's going to be actually worth is sending. Anything I need to get in touch with a couple of people as well. There's a couple of people who've emailed us. Do I need to email back? I think Alan Hansen's one of them. I think Fosco as well. Mm. I need to I need to send me apologies, like because uh, just do it all in one shot right here. Sorry, that's it. You know, CC yes. everybody right here. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> shit, can't send any samples because the law is on to it. Um, there you go. And. I haven't wrote back because I'm a lazy, forgetful shite. There you go. But that's... Blame it on your procrastination. That's right. That is and, right. And constantly looking to fill up on information. Information, filling up on information feels better than almost anything else at this moment. I like filling up on information. I do that quite often. Yeah, it um, feels good, doesn't it? It does. It's like a nice distraction from life. Oh shit! I don't know. What else have you got? Have you been up to anything? Are you busy? Nothing really. You know what I'm wearing today? We haven't even gotten the scent of the day. This is I'm in night clubbing, which for the first uh -huh. time I'm really getting you know the oak moss. Obviously, it's not the oak moss that you know. It's not thick and. <laughs> And earthy like that but i'm getting a sense of like a classic masculine uh oak moss as light as it is it's not a very heavy or dense oak moss but it's still nice i like this i like this line for something that's modern and it is uh you know it's it's slightly conceptual but it's still very functional it's great daily driver um and i agree you know for daily drivers you can get much more affordable things but when it comes to affordability, I don't think you're going to get something at this kind of quality or, you know, this kind of a build. So I do like this brand, Celine. I think it's, you know, a, a couple of notches below Chanel, but more interesting than, let's say, what Dior is putting out or maybe even Guerlain. Right? Yeah. I was wearing... The new Celine is due out on Friday here, so I'll try. I'll, I'll get to try it out, and that's uh, lavender and vanilla. I'm hoping it's not going to be a copy of Jersey or um, Caron's Put on Home. I hope it's going to be very different from those. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm wearing vintage Cartier Santos today. Nice. Yeah, it is. It's lush. I love it. Absolutely yeah, I like that fantastic. A lot too. Nightclub Warm doesn't remind me of Bulgari Black at all. It's it's a lot of galbanum and tobacco in here. The only thing that is similar to Bulgari Black would be the vanilla, but it has a nice earthy galbanum, slightly bitter, and an ashy, ashtray, vanillic tobacco. Very nice. I like it. It's got a nice bitter quality to it with, with orris, powdery orris, very balmy, warm, inviting. Slightly green, earthy moss. 
Very nice. Has kind of a classic aspect to it. Outrageous. Outrageous. Yeah, but I like Santos. I like it a lot. That's very mossy and green and, and earthy. I'm always reminded of like leaves and and forest floors. Forest florals. Forest floor, the forest floor, you know, like the tree moss growing off the base of, of trees. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very I'll classic you, I'll, masculine. I'll tell you what I've managed to change. I'll tell you something I've managed to change this year. You were talking about how I'm not going to buy as many perfumes. One of the things I found quite hard um, to stop doing, but I have stopped, is going on eBay and just like religiously searching for something to buy. You know, do you think, just do you like, think that do you think that implicits you in purchasing more is spending all that time on eBay? Like the yeah, more time you spend on there, it makes it okay to buy something. I think it not only does it make it okay to buy something, you feel like you've like if you go on there and you don't buy something, you feel like you've wasted that time. So you almost feel like a like an obligation to buy something. Yeah, um, that's a trick that they use in shops. That's it's been used since time immemorial. That, like, they'll they'll like it's a it's a common sales technique, you know. Like, if you tell someone that you're not, that's why whenever I go to a to like a concession in a department store, one of the first things I'll say is, "I'm not buying anything. I'm just looking," and they usually leave you alone after yeah. that. To be fair, yeah. Um, but it's it's that impulse, you know, when you're out and like you're on eBay and you're sitting thinking to yourself, well, I really should buy something because I've been on here for ages browsing and I would, that would be a waste of time if I hadn't, if I don't buy anything. And and then when you do, you feel like you get that little rush and stuff like that. Um, there's only certain things that I get like a rush for buying now. As you far still as get like, rush from buying backup bottles or is that just kind of like... Once I bought... Once I bought all of the Balenciagas that I got, that sort of rush dissipated. It depends what the backups. I would still buy Koros backups, but only either the Parfums Core or the Charles of the Ritz. Um, I would still buy backups of certain things, but I have shrunk down the scope of what I would buy. There are only certain fragrances and only certain vintages um, of things. I'm happy now with only owning one bottle of certain things, you know? Um, I'm like glad, Santos. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear yeah, that. My, my Santos de Cartier, I have got, I must have used about 15, 20 mils of it. And at that point, like the, the little light, the distant, like, not alarm bells, but you know, like the feeling comes, it's like, fucking hell, I might actually get through this. Um, but I don't think I'm going to need to get a backup bottle. Um, it's, it, 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 it really is very dependent. I wouldn't buy any more. Um, I wouldn't buy any more. Oh God. I wouldn't buy any more Balenciaga forearm because I don't need to. Right. Um, I wouldn't buy any more. You regret. Do you regret buying so much Balenciaga Pearl? Absolutely not. I really don't. I got them for a fantastic price, and they're only, I say they're only, they're 50 mil bottles. So they're not 100 mil bottles. I don't have 1,700 mil bottles. I've got like, I've got like loads of them off 50 mils. So really, I've only got like, I mean, Thomas has got like a liter of, uh, sorry to bring Thomas in to like protect myself. Sorry, Thomas. Um, Make you feel like, better, Thomas right? is, Thomas, every, I think, I think, I think with a vintage collector, somebody who gets like one of those, but his is Eau de Hermes and yeah. mine is Balenciaga Pour Arm. And I think it can happen that you can find a fragrance and it's discontinued or it's not as good as it used to be. And you think to yourself, shit, I need to get this and get as many of this when I can and while I can. Um, and once I bought up those Balenciaga poor arms, that, that impulse to back up and be ready and be primed and prepared, like has, has eased much like has but, eased off. But at what point do you come at before you realize, okay, this is enough. 
I think it just happens. I think you've got to want it to happen as well. Um, yeah. So it's just a feeling inside of you that you got to connect with. Yeah, I think you've just got to you've just got to like come to terms with it yourself. Um, you you've think just you'll got get to through every single drop of those Balenciagas? I think that's a good choice. I'm going to give it a good go. Um, the thing is, as well, is that they're all like the, I said, they're sealed. They haven't got like. Um, they haven't got cellophane around them, but they're unused. So I could always sell them if I wanted to, you know. Yeah. And they'll like they'll 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 I'll, they'll bring the money back. So I might wear it tomorrow. Now we've been talking about it. The, Rudy the, says the, they have Celine perfume in Canada now. Question mark. Yeah, they they opened up a new Celine boutique in the in a plaza in Toronto. And I went there a few months ago, excited to try some of the Celine's I haven't been able to before. <laughs> and I remember being so excited. And uh, I come into the boutique and the first thing they say is, do you mind sanitizing your hands? And I was like, oh, for fuck's sakes. And in that moment, I had to decide, like, what do I want to do? You know, do I, w I, I was just so annoyed with this, you know, the whole sanitizing thing. My hands were dry and I'm like, do I want to sanitize? Like, do I want to give in to this person or do I want to smell these Celine's? And I said, thank you. And I turned around and I walked out and I was like, yeah, no, it's like, I'm okay. I was really annoyed. Eh? I couldn't let it go. I, I, I just couldn't give in. I didn't want to sanitize. I was like, yeah, no, you know, every shop you go into, they're asking you to sanitize your hands. But at this point it was like, my hands are dry and they're, oh, I was just like, annoying right yeah i must admit sometimes i do and sometimes i don't and there's no there's no there's no logic to it when i do it um, yeah it's just like whatever comes over you at that point i'm not against yeah. sanitizing your hands I totally, i'm not saying to anybody don't sanitize your hands because i do too but it happens all the time you know it's yeah like it is it is literally how i'm feeling it is literally how i'm feeling when i walk in and how I'm feeling and how I react in in that moment to that right. person saying, "Can you sanitize your hands?" And sometimes I'll just go, "No, I fucking like, won't," and fucking just walk out. And sometimes Walmart, I'll just go, ah, "The Walmart, down, just say, yeah. you know, down the down the out the hallway, they have like a hundred times the customers you do. They don't ask anybody to sanitize your hands. So is this just like this this kind of it's luxury the, thing that you're trying to?" It's the brands. It's the brands. It's the yeah, brands it's the themselves. Image and they're it's, trying to associate with. Get lost. See, I don't know. I don't know that it's an image thing. Um, maybe I'm just being less. It was just um, all really pretentious, and I was like, "Yeah, no, I'm out." Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, somebody had just come on, but they've left the stream. I'm not sure who it was. It was just somebody that um with a Balenciaga avatar. <laughs> I'm sure it was a fanboy of yours. I should hope so. I don't have money with them. But anyway, I'm I'm, I'm probably going to go back Friday. I do want to try the new um, Celine release. It's called. Are you Remote. prepared for that? Are you? I are you to sanitize, I you again. probably will this time, only because I, I want to try the new perfume. Yeah. Don't try it on your hand, though. Because if you sanitize your hands and it's got that alcohol on it, will affect the smell. So you'll have yeah, to spray it on your it hands. Well. I imagine it will. Yeah. Yeah. It'll I affect your. It it'll affect your. Uh, it'll affect the smell totally. So just say, look, if I'm sanitizing my hands, you could always go in with gloves on. Right. You could just. Go, you could go in with gloves on and just say, no, I don't remove my gloves. Um gloves and the face shield you know the craziest thing i seen when when all of this started i was in the grocery store and there was this person that had saran wrapped their entire body like literally like their legs their torso their arms they had a face shield on and i was like what the fuck is going on here like this is absolutely mental some people get a some people get a some like i'm not saying People get a fetish for um, people get a fetish for being saran wrapped because I mean people do, like but like some people will will take will take that ball and run with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like some people will some people will not only like 
some people will like make it like a like a like a power trip for them. They'll be like, oh, they'll try to like feel superior because they do it. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like no, it's like you, you, yeah, you're being fucking bonkers. It's just you're just using it as a stick to beat people with. You know what I mean? It's like piss mm. off. You know, if you want to fucking wash your hands, wash your hands. If you don't want to wash, your, I mean, people should wash their hands anyway because I mean, fucking hell, yeah. use soap and water. You know what yeah. I mean? But right. it doesn't mean you have to sanitize. The problem is, right, if you go shopping, right, say if you go shopping in a perfectly legitimate pursuit, you go out to perfume smelling, right, and you go to five different shops and they all ask you to wash your fucking, like, like sanitize your hands right. when you're in there. What the fuck's right. that going to do to your fucking hands? <laughs> right. Hands feel like they want to fall off. It's like you've washed them in sandpaper. That's what it feels yeah. like. This is fucking bonkers, like. It's fucking... It's 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 fucking crackers. I must admit, I I I wear a mask. Like I say, I've got my own reasons for doing it. Um, and I would wash my hands, but I wouldn't wash my hands every time I went into a different shop. Hmm. I would stand there and I'd be like, "Look, I've washed my hands twice already. I'm not washing them again." And they'd be like, "Well, you can't come out. We like, fuck you." You know what I mean? I fuck I fuck off. I'll buy them on fucking line. Screw you. Probably fucking moon them after I left. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> fucking you sanitize that. You. Sanitize that, you bastard. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Security <laughs> swooing you away. That's right. Security I'll do it if I want. Talk. I'd fucking moon them. I'd give them the feather. I'd give them the feathered hoop. See there how they like that. Absolutely outrageous. Fucking duck out. They'd make duck food out of you. They'd try to pat me bot. I wouldn't have it. Tried going to feed the it. ducks the other day. They were all gone. The river was frozen over. I was like, oh, no more Probably because you hadn't sanitized your hand. They wouldn't come near you. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> like, we don't want to Get lost. The ducks have sanitized their feathers and their wings. Um, turned into snooty ducks. That's right. They've turned into <laughs> snooty ducks. I've seen it. You sent, you sent us a video. You sent us a video before Christmas when you were with the kids and you'd gone to, uh, you'd gone to feed them. Yeah. Um, and the ducks were still about. Do they not fly south for the winter? I imagine they do, but there's still lots of geese, and I still see geese right. around. I, I, I guess when it's cold like this, they hibernate. I don't know. I don't know. I would if I could fly. It'd be mental being able to fly, wouldn't it? Where would you go? Oh, I don't know. I can't allow it, though. Where? There's a, there's a, there's a, I'd, I'd go all over. I'd be all over the place. Um, I just I just fly about spying on people. I went I went somewhere today and parked up with who a friend for a spy on? If you could spy on anyone, who would it be? Anybody in the world? Would it be Sheldrake? Bourdon? No, I'd be Roger Dove. I'd take a camera. <laughs> I'd take a camera with us and I'd spy on Roger Dove. I'd be like, aha! You are him. not a perfumer. I knew exactly. It. That's right. I'd have a megaphone. I'd take a megaphone and a camera. And every time you left the house, I'd berate him. I'd be like, oi, there he comes. He's not really a perfumer. Look at him. Nice shirt, though. Yeah, you're maybe <laughs> right. a good gardener, but you're not a fucking perfumer. Knew That's it. right. That's right. Exactly. I'll let Roger get out of here. I could be. I could be like Roger. You're a bird like me. Stop changing the <laughs> name. You're no dove. Start throwing <laughs> rice at him. <laughs> That's right. See, see, he just starts pecking at the ground. You know what I mean? He just can't help himself. Oh, my God. Who would you spy on? I think I'd spy on the Chanel's, the Polges at Chanel. Really? Yeah, just to see what they're doing. I'd love to, like, be a fly on the wall there to see how they create and, and just listen to them. Right. Here's a question for you, right? It's not flight, but it is, it is like, like travel, like time travel anyway. Right. If you could go back, right, it, it's a, almost like a vintage question, right? If you could go back and smell any perfume, right, from like a hundred years or older, mm. right, or not even a hundred years, like fifty years, sixty years or older, and you okay. could smell it on the day it was released, yeah, right, yeah, which one would it be? Oh, good question. I would probably go back to the Roaring Twenties um, to smell either Queer de Russi. Or uh, Mitsuko is also a 20s release, 1990, 1919, 1921, something like that. I think Queer de Russie is 1924. I'd go back into that era. 
and 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 just smell those babies. You know, yeah, I get a really cool. nice connection between Queer de Russi and and Mitsuko. It's like that leather and, and, and the moss tones in the base, even though they don't. Which smell one's the well. lavender one from? Which one's the the vintage? Is it Jiki? Jiki, Jiki, and um, yeah. Bouchoir de Monsieur. I love that one. I absolutely I, I, love. Jiki. I go back to Queer de Russi, no doubt. I think it's one of the greatest perfumes ever created. I think it's in in my top five perfumes of all time. Um, and that's it's that's the idea of queer to Russi, not necessarily what concentration, let's say, um, Les Exclusives Eau de Parfum or Eau de Toile. It's like the idea of queer to Russi yeah. and, and Mitsuko. They used well. to come in, they used to come in like the extra, like the original one was like that little, was like a little like cube, like the original Chanel box, like the original Chanel packaging was like the little, little square things that you would dab yeah. on. Yeah, and like I would love to smell. I would just love to smell the original. I would agree with you as well. Um, I either, love it. Either, either Queer de Russi when it fit on like the day it came out, like as it was supposed to be, you know. Mm. Um, if I could smell something else on the day it came out, what would it be? It would have to be something unobtainable, like um, maybe. Uh, Maybe one of the Galleon Colognes, you know, like um, there's a big you know, fascination like, for those. But you know what? I've never really been sucked into that cologne idea. You know, I would love I to smell them, 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 but even the Aqua Allegorias, they're massive. There's a huge following for those. I just never really, I never got that fascination with them. And maybe it's just Absolutely. like a warm, warm weather, tropical country that that loves them and, and they're just really fresh and fleeting here where I, I find that they lack interest for me, but you know, the colognes, they're great. I'm not, you know, I'm not obsessed with them. I think you're a little bit more obsessed that, with them than I am because you bring them up from time to time for some, you have this little fascination with those colognes, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do actually. I really like the cologne Imperial. My friend got one um, paid full retail as well. You know, absolutely painful. You can and still she find was like, those. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. The colognes are still out there. Yeah, of course they are. Um, she got Cologne Imperial, and it was from a department store. She paid full price. Smelled it in the shop. One of the nicest smells because she likes really fresh stuff and clean. Yeah. Um, smelled it right, and she was like, "This is amazing." Got it home. Smelled. It. She was like, "Oh, I can't smell it anymore." And like, she came to realize over like the coming days. Oh, your jeans disappeared. Um. She came to she came to realize over the coming days that like that was how it performed. It was like a twenty minute job, um, but that's what Eau de Cologne's are. She wanted to take it back and tell them it was defective, but it wasn't. It was doing exactly exactly what it was supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, and I what I did, yeah, and I found out that Anouj had um, a vintage Eau de Cologne uh, Millicent Imperial. Eau de Cologne, and I got that, and it's a different scent. Honestly, right? It's like from thirty years ago. It's a totally different scent. Right? It's like it's it's bonkers yeah. how how it's different thicker. how different it is. Richer and richer, it, right? It was richer, but it also had more lavender in it and like sage. Yeah, it was much less. It was much less citrusy. Much less citrusy. I love this. Quirrucci, there's something sexual to it. Which almost one you, smells which like Quirrucci. I've got I've got half a liter of Quirrucci almost, but it smells like you know hotel white hotel sheets at the Ritz Carlton in, in Paris, where you just been like spent the whole weekend fucking and sucking and licking and doing all <laughs> kinds of crazy shit with, you know bodily fluids just like dripping out of every crevice and and just kind of enjoying yourself this is what it smells like it's outrageous uh which one are you talking about which one are you talking about the edt the edp or the what's the I other one you got? i have both um you know they're they're not exactly the same i have i have a 75 edt 
I have a uh, 70, uh, 200 EDT and I have a 200 EDP and I'll say, all right, you know, both are great. There's nothing wrong with either. It's just personal preference. However, I do prefer the EDT just because it opens up more leathery. And uh, in the EDP, it takes a little bit longer for the leather to come out. It is a little bit more floral, a little bit more sparkling in the opening. It's almost like they've paired the florals with some citrus, but it's still quite dirty. They haven't taken any of that dirtiness out of the EDT. I mean, the EDP. I wouldn't say that at all because it does get a little bit skanky, a little bit of those furry musks, you know, so it's still great. It's just slightly different. Um, there comes a point where it, it gets hard to separate which one is which, you know, after a point in time, after wearing them for so long, like after 20 minutes after spray or an hour after you've applied it, you're like, hmm, which concentration is. So they really kind of dry down to similar things, but both are great. Uh, honestly, if you were to wear one and come over to my house, I would probably struggle to pick up what you're wearing. I wouldn't know. I thought you were going to say you'd struggle to keep your hands off us. That that would be very true too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be charged with uh, groping you, groping the duck, bestiality. Bestiality, that's right. I... That's right. Thank Catherine you. nailed it. Uh, a perfume for a woman in a fur coat who smokes. Yeah, the Roaring Twenties. That's what they were doing. You know, women were lib liberating themselves sexually for the first time. It was freeing to enjoy sex and, and be open about it. And that's what it is to me. It's a very sexual perfume. No shame. Just like enjoy life. You don't need to be ashamed of sexuality, which doesn't get talked about often in, in, in you know, in, in Fragcom, I guess because it's a very childish place. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like sexual nuances to it. Very musky, quite furry. Um, a lot of florals. It's almost like decaying florals. But just because they're dead, they're you know, there's still life to them because they're still emitting this this smell. No, I understand. It's like a nice decay. There is a decaying aspect for me. There is an yeah. old there is an old sort of vibe. Old, old world, different era. Yeah. Like before America was fully formed, sort of thing. You know, when like Queer like, Canage is not a better... Ver I strongly disagree with that. Queer Canage is not a better interpretation of leather. It's different, but it is not better. You're, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, but I disagree strongly. Queer Canage... Chris, Crystal agrees as well, doesn't he? With? Queer, queer Canage being... I'll tell you why theory. people like queer canage better well, because it's heavier and it's richer, which doesn't necessarily make a perfume better. It's more noticeable. Like you always say, you know, it's, it's slapped on with a paint roller, you know, where, where queer yeah. sees much more intricate. It's like, everything is kind of woven together like this, where, um, queer canage, everything kind of feels like it's slapped on like bricks. The notes are bolted together. It, it's not as fine as queer de Russie, but no, I, uh, I, I, I can clearly smell queer canage easier. It's easier to interpret, whereas queer de Russie for me is like, it's not as easy to grasp because I'll, I'll, I'll catch it in the air and before I can, you know, grab a hold, it disappears. So it's like, the the time I have to actually form an opinion of it is is much shorter than it I have to form an opinion of of queer canage. It's just gone in a heartbeat. But it's 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 you know it, it's there, but it's less pronounced. And I think that's the beauty of of, of queer de Russie. Yeah. It's like it's restrained. 
right? It lets you know it's there, but it doesn't give you everything at once. I don't you know. Uh, it's, it's, still, it's, still, it's, it's like still. a woman, you know, if a woman gives you everything at once, there's nothing left for the imagination, you know? If she gives all of herself to you in, in the first night, there's like that mystery is gone. There's no right. more thinking. Like, but if, if she sends you, you know, just kind of a quick flash and close up, and then you're like, you know, you want that. You want it even more. But once you've gotten it, you know, the mystery's gone. But you get that flash and you're like, you're left with that, that photograph of that flash. And you're like, ah, I wonder what's behind. Like, what would it be like if she were to turn around? Oh, I want another flash. You know, I want that mystery. And I don't get that from queer canage. Queer canage is just like, bam, and that's it. It's over. You know, there's no secret to queer canage. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't like have like transitions and layers and movement. It's a flat. It's a dimashi. You know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty. It's pretty like needs needs most it's accessible you know it's mm. obtainable whereas queer de russie is not like that queer de russie is like you've got to build up to it it's like french women french women don't like wear number five women in general don't wear number five until they're of a, a certain point in their life and i don't just mean age i mean like they've got like a certain a certain like aura about them you know um it's a it's a grown up perfume. Um, it's not for teenagers. It's not for kids. Is that queer canage? It's queer canage, and you know I think it is a it's a nice leather perfume. I reach for queer canage uh, probably once for every time I wear queer de Russie. So you wear them you wear them the same amount is what you're saying? No. For every That's 10 times I wear Queer de Russi, I'll wear this once. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not what you said first time. You said for every time you wear it, you would wear that. No, I, that that's what I meant. 10 times to one, I'll wear Queer de Russi. It's oh, just, yeah. you know, I'm drawn to it. I'm called to it where I don't feel the same way with, with Queer Canage. Queer Canage feels much sloppier to me. It's not as fine. No, it's not as fine. It's um, it's. I would totally agree with you. It, it hasn't got the, it hasn't got the intricacies. It hasn't yeah, got like, the. Like I said, it feels like Demache used the huge, like ten-inch rolling brush when he was painting this on canvas. And what does it feel like with Creator Russi? Like he used like a just like a little tiny brush like this, you know. With like fine horse hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. To me, it's just so magical. And it takes me to another time and place. I feel like I'm in a different era. I'm in an era that I've never uh, before seen. That's, that's what it does. Yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of disappointed people here. And I understand your love for queer canage. It's just like, I don't see it the same way. Tell me, why does everybody like queer canage? Is it because it's louder and bolder and, and more aggressive? You know, that to me is not what perfume is. It's more accessible. Uh, we had this conversation before, uh, maybe not on stream, but I think that um, Demashi made the privés and made perfumes for Dior to make them more accessible um, and make them so that they smell good. They don't smell great. Whereas Chanel tries to go for like greatness, um, hit the bullseye every time. I think Chanel sort of goes for more of a shotgun approach. Um, they're not intricate. They're not delicate. They're not fine and like little 
little brush strokes, little intricacies and unfoldings, and, and like with all the little secrets in them. And I think the Dior's are the exact opposite. I think that big, broad strokes, like you said, um, I think they're made to be accessible. I think they're made to be easy. I think then I wouldn't say they're cheap and cheerful, but it's like that sort of thing, you know. It's um, they are they are cheerful. They are um, they you are think accessible. The Dior's are cheerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost like the Chanel's are kind of depressing, right? Not depressing, but they're they're much darker. They're moody. Yeah. The the queer to see to me feels moody. Like I can smell a love affair there. Not necessarily love. It doesn't smell like love. It smells like an affair. You ever see two people, let's say a, a man and a woman, you're in a parking lot and they kind of like park their cars next to each other and they get out and they're old and you're like, this looks like really suspicious. It looks suspect. And it almost feels like they're they're cheating, right? They're in right. other relationships, but just the way they get, maybe it's a new relationship. I don't know. I always envision cheaters and the way they're all over each other and, and, and they get into one car and they leave one car there. And it's, it's kind of like they're going off somewhere, maybe a hotel or I don't know. You, you kind of create the story. That's what Queer to Receive reminds me of. It's not like a loving, um, nurtured relationship. It's more like um, something forbidden, something that's not supposed to be happening, something so, something so wrong about it. But, you know, it, it just feels too good that you can't resist. And that's what Kurt de Russi is like. Yeah. So do you not think that Queer de Russie smells damaged? Because that's what I get from it. What um, do you mean damaged? I think it smells like a damaged person. <laughs> I, get, I, get, I, get, I get damage from it. Um, I get pain. I get... I get the moodiness. Yeah, I get the... It's, I get it's the damage horrible. from it. I, it's like regret. You know... You know, before before the affair, it's like all this excitement. But the moment you you finish, there's like that that feeling of regret. Why did I do that? Was it yeah. worth it? Yeah, it's I don't I don't necessarily get the the sexual vibe as strongly as you do from Quirrusi. I get I get more of a darkness from it. Um, Regret, yes, but not necessarily just pointed at sex. Um, I get regret from like life. Um, I get a feeling of like foreboding, darkness. Um, not cursed, but like feels as though like your yeah, life's almost like preordained. Like people with depression will often talk about feeling guilty, but they don't know why. And it's an aspect of it's an aspect of like depression. Like Queer de Russie gives me strong like depression sort of vibes. It's sad, but it can be beautiful as well. I'm not trying to like fetishize depression because it's not. It's not yeah. it's not it's not pretty, it's not nice, it's not attractive. What it is is it's pain. And I think I get a lot of um I get a lot of that uh I get it, I get a lot of that sort of regret and guilt and then but a feeling of like loss and a little bit of confusion as well um confusion about why you know the whole question of why i get a lot of that out of queer to russi i think that's the smoke um the smoke and that hides a lot but it also allows you to hide in it and people will People can use it as a people can use it to be on their own, and people can use it as a mask. You heard that saying before that if you give like you see somebody to their face, 
Um, no, if you see somebody, if you if you give somebody a mask, they'll show you who they really are. Mm. Um, that's what Creator Russe sort of feels like. It feels like the mask that like somebody could put on to show you who they really are. Yeah. Watch their actions. Their actions will tell you who they are. Yeah. Compelling. Let me let me invite um, Nish Nishko is here. Let's see what his thoughts are. What's up, Nishko? Hello. Thanks for the invite. Good to so, see you again. Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Good to see you too. Are you familiar with uh you have any thoughts on queer canage or queer de Russie? So I have do you hear me by the way? I have a new we hear you, set. yeah, you're fine. Okay, good. And I'm a bit sick, so um I'm familiar with uh queer canage, not so much with uh, queer de Russie. Why not? Mm. What's your problem? No, nothing. Uh, I just haven't smelled it as much. Um, All right. So I don't have too much experience with it, but I do. I know that I did like it last time I, I smelled it. Okay. Um, I have a sample here of queer queer canage. So give us your take on queer canage. <sighs> Smelling it off the cap, it smells very fruity to me, like banana. Okay. <laughs> like like it's sweet like uh, so we have the, the this candy called uh, creme creme banana yeah it smells kind of like that to me just smelling it off the cap it's uh, <laughs> yeah so it's very fruity I, I don't know why maybe it's the ylang ylang or the violet leaf maybe or the violet um or iris, maybe. Blossom. A lot of orange blossom yeah. in the top. Very mentholated. Minty. Mentholated without being minty. Yeah, exactly. So we got this. It has this like uplifting thing. Right. Eugene, I'm going for something to eat. Give us about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, man. Thank you. I'll not be long. So I can smell it. I don't, I don't want to smell it because it's so strong. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a... I'll give it a little spray because it develops let me see here what do you get from it i get a lot of what you said but i get more of the orange blossom kind of this mentholated powdery orange blossom and and okay yeah so I'm kind of in a lane now... but the leather to me is quite different than queer de russie how how do you explain the leather in here? Because I can't really, I get so much more than just you know leather. That's like way in the background for me. This to me feels more like Shalimar leather, like handbag leather. Yes. Where Thank the you. leather in Queer de Russie is more a mix of florals and, and birch tar and labdanum. I think the yeah. reason that. The labdanum is not as noticeable in Queer de Russie is because labdanum is usually mixed with like vanilla and tonka and benzoin and all these other sticky things. Mm -hmm. and, um, so there's still some stickiness in Queer de Russie, but it's not as sweet as what we're familiar with. You know, there's still no. that sticky birch tar in, in Queer de Russie, mm -hmm. but it's all very smooth. So you have kind of like, you have some citrus and you have some florals, you know, that are all very smooth. And then you have that stickiness to kind of make for contrast. Mm. So when I, I haven't smelled it in a while, but now to me, it smells very powdery in the opening. It's very powdery on me. Mm. Let me see. <sighs> that's weird i don't really get um a lot of powder from queer de Russi. like like powdery like shelly mod how how powdery do you guys find it i've never really associated queer de Russi with powder oh, no. i'm smelling the the queer canage oh i'm no. talking about i'm talking in the comments here okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay um 
I get the orange blossom, as you said. I get some iris. Queer de Russi is almost pickled and briny. Mm. It's very green. You know, it has this pickled element to it without really smelling like Polsky Agorki pickles. Interesting. I just remember uh, Creator C being much more, like, much more interesting. Opposed to? Uh, to Kanaj. Okay. But you prefer Kanaj. No, I, I don't. <laughs> I just have a sample of this one. To me, um, yeah. Kanaj almost feels like a cheap imitation of Queer de Russie. Is Queer de Russie soapy? It is very soapy. Yes. The good, uh, yeah, I forgot. It's, it's soapy. Absolutely. It's like soapy saddle leather, almost horsey. There is a horsey technicality about Queer de Russie. It's like they've just soaked up a, a saddle. So now that now that he said soapy, this to me smells soapy now that he said that. <laughs> yeah. I think I get more incense from um mm. queer canage. Queer C smells more like old books too. It's very it's very old perfume, whereas queer canage feels more modern. Yes, that I have to agree on. For sure. Mm. It's so musty. It's so dirty. You know, it's got this clean <laughs> aspect to it. I think that's another nice contrast that it makes because it has soap, which is considered clean. And then it has those like dirty, sexual, leathery undertones, you know? Mm. And that's kind of the beauty of, of Queer de Russie is all the contrasts. It has that smoothness of the florals and 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 uh, the citrus, and then kind of like those sticky labdanum elements. I would like to to find an older bottle of uh, Queer C, like an EDT or something. Sorry, uh, I would like to find an old bottle of uh, Queer C. Hmm. So. Do you find there to be a big difference between the the formulations? Not massive. They're slightly different, yeah. Um, okay. I think like both are cool great, though. I think I think the the modern EDP still trace it stays very true to what Queer de Russi is trying to say. Mm. Yeah, the carnation's probably what gives it that old world vibe. Mm, I can see that, but you know, none of the none of the florals really stick out. It's not like I say, you know, I, there's times where I feel like I it, there I can smell a jasmine or ylang, but nothing really sticks out. You know, I'm sure there's rose, and I've heard there's carnation, but you know, it's it's all very abstract. It's like a bunch of florals to make up one smell. What's up, Ben? It's good to see you, man. Whereas um, in, in Queer Canage, the orange blossom really sticks out. It's like, it's pronounced. It's obvious that it's there. And I don't get that from the Chanel. It's much more, it's, it's better. It feels better blended. And that's what I mean by intricate. And everything kind of gets lost in that, you know. It's very much, just like what Canage means. Canage is like a... It's it's the way they stitch their fabrics or something. It's the way the the um, kind of the way the materials come together, isn't it? Isn't that what canage means? It's like a form of weaving, right? Yeah, the way everything gets intertwined. Yes, but that doesn't you know queer canage doesn't feel like that to me. Uh, Chanel feels more canage like intertwined. So yeah, I can agree with that because like from when I sprayed it to now, it smells like exactly the same. Yeah. It hasn't really, it doesn't, 
uh, what's that word? Um, uh, what's up, Peter? Peter's here. How's it going? I'm looking for a word like watching. melodic. Yeah, so yeah, it's just like one. Yeah. I get the same, like, it, it basically smells like the opening right now. And uh, Creator I see, I, I can. I can imagine changes much more, and yeah, yeah, as I said, it's more interesting. I think a lot what a lot of people don't like is there. It's I I I'm not even myself able to smell queer to Russi with every single breath. You know, it's more restrained and it's hidden and it comes and goes, and that's kind of how it, its personality is. Um, but queer canage is it's it's much bolder and it, and it and it lets you know that it's there and it announces itself and it's like you know that person in the room that you can constantly hear and he wants to be the center of attention and there's never a moment of silence that's queer canage it, it needs to be like the life of the party um i think that's why i like queer better that's my preference in, in style of perfume is the quieter ones Was it like Quirusi? It was like made when uh, Mademoiselle met like some Russian guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right. Um, it was like Dmitry some Pavlovich. Some... It was like the, I think the prince of Russia or yeah, the son of the Tsar or something. I don't know. Okay. And is she like, uh, what was it like? She loved the smell of his coat or something like that. He, his like leather jacket. I think it was his know. leather boots, right? Leather he boots. boots oh, okay. <laughs> birch tar. I think birch tar was used as a cleaning agent, and it was the scent of you know they obviously had an affair, and yeah, she wanted to reproduce, you know, whatever their interaction, and the smell of his boots with birch tar, which I thought was a great deal because it's like I think it's one of the greatest perfumes ever made, ever created. Yes. It's one of my favorite smells. Anyway. Because that was just that was what you said before with it smelling like a love affair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very dark. Mm. <laughs> well, why? You know, there's so many leather perfumes. Why would want somebody want to smell like a brand new sports car interior, like Tuscan leather or Shalimar? To me, smells like a like a vintage handbag. You know, mm. why would you want to smell like a lipstick or I don't know? There's just it's just the smell that you associate with. Yeah. Um, I like the smell of leather. I've always liked the smell of leather. I think like Ferrari has a leather scent that smells exactly like like brand new car seats. Yeah. Hello, Victoria. <laughs> to, to me, it's like, why why would you want to smell like that? It's, but yeah, I mean, it's not for, for everyone, I guess. Right. And it's for leather it's lovers. Subjective. Yeah, yeah, very subjective. Um, not everybody wants to smell like lollipops or Windex or bubble gum or, of you course, know, marshmallows. We don't yeah. want to smell like s'mores at the campfire. <laughs> By the fireplace. Right. Queer orange <laughs> really smells like leather and potatoes. <laughs> Very powdery potatoes that were just ripped right out of the ground. Can we see the chat from, from where we at? Because I can't see them. I'm not sure if you can. If you have hmm. another device, you might be able to see it. I'll drop the link if somebody else wants to come on. But that's why it's, you know, considered one of the greats. It's been out for almost 100 years now, and it's still a, a very relevant perfume. What's up, Ben? Good to see you, buddy. Hey, guys. How you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Hope I mean, it's a little bit late to that, but I haven't seen anyone. Yeah, it's, it's all good. If you celebrate New Year, to me, it's just really another day. <laughs> How you doing? I'm very good. well. Good. Uh, how have you been? Yeah, good. I uh, I thought, I'd, uh, sorry, I've totally bust in in the middle of a conversation. Like, you guys should carry on or not. No, you saved us. Uh, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's all fine. You well, know, I... Yeah. I, I I thought I'd come in because I picked up a fragrance uh, from one of your recommendations uh, this uh -oh. week. Okay. All right. So okay. that's the Gucci Alchemist Garden. And is it? Oh, Midnight, Midnight Stroll. Stroll, right? Yeah. 
Uh oh. Interesting. Man. Yeah. All right. So tell us about it. What does it smell like to you? Do, do you know Tom Air by Beaufort? I haven't smelled any Beauforts, no. Okay, so I, I thought, like, straight off the bat, like, it smelled to me like a really, like, polite version of Beaufort without this kind of salt and carnage of Beaufort, but it's got that birch tar, like, really strong kind of smoky tar in the opening, right? Yeah. But it's it's almost like if if Beaufort... Yeah, it's, it's like Beaufort Tonnerre, but you can wear it in polite society without being, like, afraid of getting beaten up by everyone who smells you um okay fair but enough no, i love it man love it it's the uh, only thing i don't like don't like about it is it doesn't seem to last very long on me i don't know what do you really? think it lasts lasts about a couple of hours and it's gone but i love it for those couple of hours man that, that, that really tar so you like the smell i love it love it a bit okay that's i thought good. it would be more incensey than it is i say it's, it seems to me like more coniferous and tar um, right but so beautiful. you don't get reminded of church or nah. dry woods, pews? I don't. I don't. I, I read a couple of reviews that said it was like really churchy. And I was like, yeah, what sort of fucking church are you going to? Like the church <laughs> of Satan or what? Like it's, 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 to me, it's like real dark. Like it's got a really dark, like tariness. Um, yeah. So I didn't it really feel like dark. it was churchy. But... I get a lot of earth elements from it as well, like outside forest vibes. Definitely um, some of that, yeah. Balsam definitely. resins. Mm. Very balsamic, I... sparkling, sappy, uh, you know, um, fur balsams. But yeah. I also get, I get a lot of church from it, you know, oh, dry okay. pews, um, th thurible, you know, the sensor as the, the 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 guy going around and kind of um whisking the 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 incense sensor i get a lot of that yeah yeah, and yeah to no, me, I, I love I... that style of perfume like churchy resinous incense and i think this is one of the best i've ever come across i, I like think... this better than the comme de garçon oh yeah that because i was about to say that actually like avignon yeah because because there's one no comparison of... for me avignon like it falls so completely flat next to this i, I don't i don't think they're comparable at all because i mean like like that because when people say like our oh, church incense you know avignon and it's kind of the one that people sort of point towards right like healy cardinal and cdg avignon and their whole like like incense collection but I, I felt like like they're like really cold frankincense fragrances, whereas mm. this one is like a really warm, dark, cozy, like tar. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was much more coniferous as well. Like I say, like about an hour in, it starts getting real aromatic, and there's like you know like the group like quite a lot of green in there. Yeah, it's very like, green to me. Yeah, yeah, I it's thought it was very green. green. The Gucci. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I think it's like cypress woods. Yeah, exactly. But no, I love it. I thought it's brilliant. Um, I love it as well. I think the mm. whole line is great. Even, you know, I'm not a big fan of Western Oud, especially like the synthetic one. And even the Gucci Oud, it is like over synthesized, but I think it's still a good wear. You know, mm. I, I think I like it better than some of the Ouds Guerlain has in their Absolute Dorian. Mm. Or, or Arma what Armani's done with their Ouds. I can't stand the 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 oud that armani has i think it's called royal oud yeah the one everybody lo everybody loves oh, <laughs> I, I, can't I don't stand get it. it it's i think it's horrible but um the gucci oud is not great by any means but it's wearable you know i can wear mm. it and again it's very dark and and tarry like this louis anthony reyes said is it better than nuit de fer from louis vuitton <laughs> different i have to say yeah. no but it's different. But I'm I've got a hard I've got a proper hard on for Nuida first. So uh yeah. But very but it's very different because um Nuida first got that a lot of that, that kind of leather vibe yeah. to it. And, and this Nuit, is a puppy. Nuit de Feu goes animalic on me. Like it, it gets a little bit dirty, like it's vulgar. It's still it, incense -y, but it gets vulgar. Mm, for me, Nuit de Feu is like less about the incense and more about that kind of suede leather. Um, and the incense sort of plays like a backward role to it. Whereas, yeah. whereas in this one, like Midnight Stroll, it's more about the kind of tarry incense kind of stuff rather than 
and and definitely there's no leather or anything um so yeah i i prefer new defer but like they're quite they're, it's like apples and oranges in a way um it is so new defer to me smells more outdoorsy while the the gucci smells more like a church inside of a church very smoky dark resinous like purifying the air with incense it's like in burning incense that's literally what it smells like to me it, it definitely has got like that um it, like i noticed like that almost like when you burn like a stick of incense and you can smell like the core like um yeah as opposed to the actual sort of perfume of the incense like that when it's burning that kind of like bamboo core yeah, I, I thought it smelled like that quite a lot um, with the, the kind of ashiness to it. Because I, I think this has got like a really strong ashy vibe to it as well, which I quite liked. Um, yeah, so the Gucci smells much more like this, while the Louis Vuitton smells like you've chopped, chopped down a, a fur balsam and you've gotten some of those resins on your finger. Still very incense-y. Um, which one do I prefer? Oh, I'd rather not have to like choose. I do like them both. I love both. I don't get it. I don't get any uh, oud though from the uh, Nuit de Feu from Louis Vuitton. I, I think that's the animalic aspect. It is to me. It's dirty. Okay, I I, I, can, I can see that. It is quite dirty. But yeah, no beauty. I picked it up. You not get the Aqua de Gio note in in a midnight stroll. <laughs> no, are you kidding? <laughs> I, I I so that I actually get what like I think um so I have you smelled Oud Mineral by Tom Ford? Yeah, the same. I, I, I feel like there's a kind of similarity between like the the, the Aqua de Gio <laughs> note, Oud Mineral and, and a midnight stroll. There is like something in that woody base that like it, it's probably like an aroma chem or something that they all share, but there is like this slight like plastic woodiness to all three. Um, but but it's it's really subtle, and it, I don't feel like to say it's similar to Oud Mineral is like nowhere near. But hmm. I, I felt like there's something in there that that shares like a maybe that maybe they share an aroma chemical or something. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Like these aren't the epitome of natural perfumery, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It's in overlords, but yeah. they smell great for what they're doing. Uh, Unum Labs is, is nice. Yeah, I think they're both great incense perfumes. Uh, I think I wear the Gucci a little bit more, to be honest. I think it's easier to wear than do you? Yeah, wear. yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't find possibly. either of them particularly difficult to wear, but I, I could, I can definitely see like you can throw on the Gucci like anytime. I, I don't yeah. think you're going to offend anyone with it ever. But I think the Gucci also has more substance. It, it, it's uh, the, the Louis Vuitton is more of a. It's more like Queer de Russie. It's softer. It's not as noticeable. Yeah. I find the Gucci a little bit heavier, but never over overbearing. It's it's not obnoxious. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, it wears real um, close on me, so I, I feel like it's all right. Although I only spray like one or two sprays. Um, oh, never. really? Yeah, I you're an like, under sprayer. Yeah, it's like habitual because <laughs> because I used to be a hairstylist and I was been right up in people's shit, right? So. Yeah, I, I just just habitually like kind of that's just the way I've always been like just spraying like really lightly and that's that. So Which is nice because it means my perfume lasts forever. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but are you going to be around forever to enjoy it? I'm a heavy Absolutely sprayer. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a heavy sprayer. I'm talking. Are like you really? Five, yeah, five to ten, like five minimum. Oof. Usually more than that, six, seven to ten, and I just keep okay. going. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's like I gotta enjoy this stuff. Yeah, I mean, for me, it depends on, of course, which perfume I got. You know, but yeah, I was just usually... thinking. Imagine like five to ten of a Francesca Bianchi or something. Christ, you would be like just <laughs> annihilating everyone in your path. Like, Are they that loud? The... <laughs> yeah. Try like... ten sprays of like under the skin or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> it's it's the, the, like every Francesca Bianchi I've smelled is like one spray 
and you're wearing it for the rest of the week. Uh, mm. It's they're, they're, they're monstrous. Um, mm. I've not tried any of, of of her work. She's excellent in my like. I actually think like as in terms of that kind of like indie uh, kind of house like that. You know, like um, for me, like the the best. They are um, they are like artistic in a way. Mm. Not your and, us usual perfume. Fearless as well. I feel like. Um, you know, like the use of ingredients is like really fearless. It's yeah. It's some of the stuff, it, yeah, just just real. Like, there's no subtlety to them. Though it's 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 very much like this is she's she's clear, got a clear image of what she wants, yeah. and then she just goes for it balls like deep. Subtlety though. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not sure if it would be everyone's cup of tea because like, like, like that teasing, that 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 bit of foreplay that keeps things interesting, right? Yeah, see, these are like, I mean, like, uh, what's that? A Lover's Tale, which has like got castorium in it, and it's it's like castorium and iris and leather, um, and it's lovely, but, but it's insane, <laughs> like no subtlety. It's just like you want castorium, bang! <laughs> <laughs> castorium is nice. A bit like small doses. It's a bit like a zoologist in a way, I believe. Mm. Like the style but, of the perfumery they go for. Old to me, at least. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. Quite. quite um, <clears throat> say like you could say it's like if you were being polite, like I'd say it's like uh, like unapologetic and look like ruthless. But <laughs> if you were being kind of harsh, I think you could possibly say it's quite crass as well. Mm. Like that like, yeah. said, so there is no subtlety. It's like just smashing the back doors in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Depends what you mean by that. You can mean many things by smashing. I'll, I'll leave it like that. <laughs> um, you know, and I'll go five to yeah. ten. I'm I'm a heavy sprayer on 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 things like that. Mm -hmm. But if I wear like a Chanel, I can go even heavier, right? I can go more than ten with uh, Queer de Russe or let's say it's Jersey. Lelion. Yeah. Oh, not Lelion. I would. You know, <laughs> three is <laughs> two. You can go two, two with two, Lelion. Two, two, two. I wore two one time when I was uh, when I went out to dinner with my girlfriend. It was I. You wore Lelion. Um, yeah. What does it she was think like in, of it? Indoors, she loves it. Oh, that's good. She wasn't she wasn't a fan in the beginning. Uh, yeah. She thought it was just too too much. But yeah. Yeah. So these Chanel's, I can go much heavier than 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 five or ten, but. Um, I I think the Gucci has a lot of substance to it, so even five is enough. You know, it's a full perfume; it's not light and transparent. Mm, so there's yeah. no need to go more than that. So I said, imitation man is underrated. That's another one I just bought. I bought it a couple of weeks ago. Um, Amouage imitation. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that stinks. I still haven't tried Lily on. Oh, it's great. Oh, well, yeah, I'd love as to I hear your, your, your I thoughts couldn't smell on it. I couldn't taste the dinner. <laughs> Just eating the perfume. Yeah. I, it, it's really, um, everybody loves it, don't they? Um, like everyone, like, I, I don't think I've seen a bad review on it yet. Uh, four sprays is a sweet spot. See, everybody has their own thing, you know? Everybody knows what works for them. Right? I, I yeah, I, I, I kind of wish I could spray more. I just kind of, for so many years, just went with that mindset of like, I can't smother people at work. And now it's like, I kind of just got settled into that comfort zone. And now when I spray more, I get quite self conscious. Yeah. Um, so, what about when you were playing in 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 clubs and bands and stuff? Were you were you going overboard there? No, like it's just the same. Like I say, it's always been. I always just put it on like one of my wrists, just like one or two sprays onto my wrist, and then because like I'm quite like oh, I like talk to my hands anyway, so I'm always waving them around my head. So I kind of just get it like that. But yeah, no, I, I, always the same because you know we're as a hairdresser, like you're kind of told like you can't smell strong or whatever um 
So, yeah, but that, just... that's interesting because you're working with an assortment of people that you would imagine, you know, people are getting their hair cut, they're into their looks, they're probably fashionable, they're probably wearing fragrance too. Like, I don't know what kind of place you worked in, but so, so that's the interesting thing, right? So, I, I worked in um, like a reasonable place, um, uh, and were you a men's where, barber or a hairstylist? I, I was a women's hairstylist. Um, okay. I, I can't do barbering. I've, I've, I've never tried. I didn't even train as a barber. I mean, it's the same shit. I can I can do barbering, but right. I, I wasn't ever trained as a barber. But um, so I worked in this place that was like quite high, like classy. And uh, but the interesting thing is, the higher you go, right, the more they want it to be like high fashion and that, but the less they actually want it to be high fashion. So that, so it's always like it. it it's everything is like you can wear what you want but you can't really wear what you want you know yeah, like to, you can wear what you want as long as it's what we tell you to wear it, precisely yeah so it's like you've got to look fashionable but not too fashionable like it, 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 and you can smell great but not too great like everything is very reserved um and it's it's a little yeah you got to fit a certain profile image yeah That's so and like i think if you're lower down the <laughs> that sounds horrible if you're lower down the chain if you work in like a, a a more independent place probably you can wear what you want and spray what you want but i worked in say it was a bit of a name and and they're like very like the opposite like they want that kind of impression that they're of an independent place that's cool and hip and fashionable but they don't really want to do that mm. <laughs> So, Crazy. Yeah. But I'm imagining a lot of your customers came in, they were smelling of perfume. Yeah, it's like it's basically stinky middle aged middle aged women that could have because anyone that could afford to get their hair cut there, you know, like well yeah. off middle aged women. Um, Especially coming from home, they probably like spray on as my oh, I'm going <laughs> out, I'm going to get a haircut, I'm gonna put on a ton of perfume, I'm gonna get noticed. A shit ton of opium all the time, constantly. <laughs> now, was it opium or black opium, like the the uh, probably black opium actually the really cloy one but yeah. um yeah i used to smell I, like opium a lot when i was there oh mitch hey mitch rich rich is here but he's not here he's like your 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 hair salon you know he's here but he's <laughs> not here <laughs> tell us what you're having rich we want to see your sandwich did you get a sub what kind of a sub? Foot long, six inch. <laughs> Do you guys like sandwiches? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I made one in the morning with pasteta. Ew. It's fire. I I know what that is. Tell everybody what pasteta is. That's so, nasty. That's like liverwurst, dude. Are you It's the best in the world. The <sighs> chicken. The chicken flavor. It's the best. I, I never want to see that or smell what is this with pickles. It's like a liverwurst pate that comes in the can. Oh, it's nice! Like <laughs> chick, chicken, chicken liver paste. I remember oh. eating that. It, yeah, it's literally paste. It's like mashed up hot dogs. Nah, it's like stop it. Hot dog paste is what it is. You know it's true. That's why you're telling me to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's so good, it's so creamy, it's so fluffy, it's it's amazing. It's not like traditional like uh, liver paste. This is so fluffy, so creamy, it's amazing. Oh. It tastes so good. And it's got a weird spice in it too. I love it. It's lots of like paprika. I haven't I haven't ate that like in twenty years. <laughs> you should try it. No, I'm good. It's like literally <laughs> blending hot dogs and, and it turning into like paste. This guy. <laughs> Am I wrong? Ben, I mean, you should just, just try it. They, they, they probably have pasteta in the UK too. So I, 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 well, it's some controversy. controversy. Uh, I've been a, a vegetarian since I was like 12 years old. So like 30, nearly 30 years. Oh, so okay, I, okay. Oh, sure. How did that happen? <laughs> so I don't, yeah, anything to do with meat. I don't even know what it, I can't even remember what it tastes like. I mean, I actually, respect. I like, I like Ivod. Spaced Out says you need to try Ooh. Ivod. I'm a big fan of Ivod. Ivod is Ivod like is amazing. peppers, like, like pepper it's like a pepper spread i think that's fabulous <laughs> i like that a lot 
yeah, it's amazing. It's nothing like pasteta. Pasteta is like liverwurst, nasty. Oh my god, man, this guy. Do you like the spicy version or, or the medium version of the pasteta? Uh, no. Um, Vivar? Ivar. Yeah. Ivar. I like spicy food, so probably the spicier ones. Okay. Yeah. The cream Man. ones or the ones that are like just. Uh... You know, my kids call hot dogs, and it'll forever remind me of like pushed is like glizzies. <laughs> so just the sound of like glizzy. <laughs> I don't know where they got that from. It must be like a a, yeah. a millennial thing. Yeah, probably. Glizzy. But just the sound of that, you know, they f like glizzy. It feels slippery and they have this weird reflection off of the hot dog. And they're, so they're sticky and they're wet and they, they feel weird. It's the easiest way to explain anything you don't understand is, oh, that just must be a millennial thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You got to blame it on something. Yeah. I can't blame it on myself. You always got to blame it on something. It's not me. It's the glizzy. Is that, glizzy. How's your move? You've moved house now. Yeah, it's great. I've still I saw, got, like, saw your video of your old place. You went outside on the balcony. I was like, fuck, oh, man, that looks nice. Like, all those yeah, yeah, that was amazing. The fucking rent was three thousand. Like it cost me three thousand to live there. You know, a month. Yeah. Well, You're fucking kidding yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> like rent comes out every month. Yeah, it was three thousand. What? Mm. We pay like I don't know what, what what's it gonna be in like U.S. dollars. Let's say it's like thousand two hundred euros a month. Yeah. For a big, big, big apartment here, we have a big four bedroom apartment so four three thousand yeah four bedroom damn that was a two bedroom 800 square foot 800 square feet it's like Shit. Puny. It was puny one bathroom uh sometimes i had like my kids there for four of us on the weekends you know it'd get a little bit crammed during the week it was okay but yeah with rent and utilities and parking it, it cost me three grand a month to live there so it was mental, That's but it was nice. Crazy. I loved the view. I loved, you know, I I loved the place. It was a really nice, cozy. I felt mm. very welcome there, and I loved living there. It's just like too outrageous, too much money for a place that you know. I spent mo half of my time at work, so I'd spend a few hours there in the evening, and the rest of the time I'd be sleeping. So it's not like I I spent all my time there. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, fuck it. Eventually, I want to buy a house. You know. I miss owning a house, but with owning a house, there's so much work that comes with it. And uh, yeah. I'm not, I, I don't enjoy shoveling or, or, or cutting the grass or all that crap that comes with owning and property taxes, you know, well, yeah, uh, you got to decide what you want to do. The kids do that or the wife. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if they're willing, if they're willing, yeah. you got to negotiate that into, you know, an agreement somehow. But you're going to pay for it some other way, you know? <laughs> of course. You're going to pay one way or another. Fragrance. You can't have everything your way. And that's it. What else is going on? So you're... Uh, ben, wh what part of the UK are you in? Uh, right, like right at the south, like as south as you can possibly go um, in a city called Brighton. Um, like, say you got London, and then it's like directly underneath London on the beach. Okay. And um, so how far are you from Rich? He's in Black Blackpool, I want to say. Fucking miles. Um, Rich is like the other end of the country. He's okay. Up north. Uh, um, yeah. So like pretty much the opposite ends. Um, but yeah. But, I, I, England's not that big, though, is it? So it's that's like the funny. Th England's tiny, and whenever I speak to Americans, they're like, "Oh, you know, I'm just going to see my mate. Yeah, going to drive no, for like five no, no, hours." I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Rich is in um, Newcastle. Newcastle, right? Oh, he always gets pissed off at me whenever I say <laughs> Blackpool. It's like I'm not from fucking Blackpool. <laughs> no, Newcastle. Yes, you're right. It's Newcastle. How far is Newcastle from you? It's yeah, like like the opposite end of the country like about i think it's probably about seven or eight hour drive maybe but oh, shit. It's, okay so 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 yeah like when you speak to americans or canadians or whatever like you know people that are from a country that's actually big they're like oh you know 
I was going to go visit a friend. They live four or five hours away. But for me, if I any if I drive four or five hours in any direction, I'm in the sea. Do you know what I mean? So it's I suppose it's all relative, isn't it? Like yeah, I, I think. But I think Rich is is quite far. Like it would take like probably yeah. eight hours to drive. There. See, I've been to certain parts of Europe, and when you say four hours, it's a <clears> long, <throat> hard four hours because it's very um terraneous lots of mountain yeah, yeah. and winding roads and sometimes you're on a mountain and it's like one lane and you can <laughs> see down and, you know and if you go overboard there's no way you're getting out um, <laughs> here the roads are very different everything's really straight like straight highways you got four lane highways right yeah you almost yeah. feel like you're on a highway you're in your family room pretty much if you've got a big car right yeah yeah like like um australia as well like because I, I, i've gone on the coast of australia and that was just like you might drive for like 24 hours and, and you you can just put your foot down and just go and it's just almost straight lines yeah um, do i yeah. like poutine i love poutine it's yes i do like poutine more than i should do you guys know what poutine is no i guess it's a canadian thing so poutine nope. is french french fries with cheese sprinkled cheese curds sprinkled over top with gravy and that sounds same, all right yeah at the same time i <laughs> the first time i had heard of it i thought it was at, like vile why would anybody want to eat that and then i tried it and i was like oh shit this is really good that and, sounds uh, nasty it yeah, sounds I mean, like fancy cheese and chips like cheese, chips, then, and cheese, chips, and gravy. Classic. Poutine took off like in Canada. Now you got poutine restaurants where that's all they serve, and they've got so many different versions of it. Like they've added green, um, ground beef. They've added beans. They've added, you know, all these different kind of mixtures. So you can really, you can really choose like how you want your your poutine. You know, Doesn't the French food. fries get soggy? From the not really. Gravy. I guess if you cook them, if you know, if you cook them enough, no, they don't. They don't really get soggy. Like if you fry them four times, triple fry them. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to eat <laughs> refried fries. No, that's just nasty. But See, it's chips really and gravy. Good. The chips get. That's what you want. You want them to get soggy. It's almost like mashed potato. Yeah. Then, and you, they're just like, oh, mm, mm. it's like dunking a biscuit. You know, chips and gravy when they get all soggy, it's lovely. Yeah, it's not they very absorb good for all the, you, all the goodness. <laughs> I mean, I like I don't mind eating it, but they're not good for you. It's a very heavy dish, uh, yeah. poutine, right? And you go to Montreal, like uh it's probably like the capital of poutine in Canada. They've got poutine restaurants in every corner. Really great. But that that was started by like I think it was like McDonald's or something that started poutine here. Obviously, because that's what they do. They're in the French fries business, right? And then now it's like you have your niche poutine houses. <laughs> <laughs> do they have anything weird like that where you guys are from? Nishko, you're in Sweden, right? Mm -hmm. Do they have any weird dishes like that? I don't know. Sweden is boring like that. We don't have like a big like national national dish dish like that. Do you guys yeah, have an like, obesity problem like the rest of the Western world in Sweden? What, what was that? Do you have an obesity epidemic? Not really. No, I want to say that. No, eh? Pretty like no. more nor normal people here, like the UK, I would say. Does the UK have a, you know, the US is just like, they've got a big problem. Canada, too, yeah. we're heading that way. It's I think it's like getting worse. Roads are getting bigger. Vehicles are getting bigger in order to compensate for that. You know, people are just like, they're just distracting themselves with food, right? They just keep eating to make themselves feel better. Well, I mean, that I can say the same about perfume buying. I mean, I just distracted myself by buying perfume. Right, right. But, like, but you don't get is, fatter from perfume buying, right? No, you, you just get poorer. And, and and you slowly smell worse and worse. Yeah. Because, see, I, I've had, I've been having this thought, like, th thoughts recently, <clears> right? <throat> like, when I started, like, getting into perfume, like, back in the kind of 90s, well, sort of early 2000s, um, 
like, it was because I wanted to smell <laughs> nice, right? But now, somehow, I buy perfume and it's not because it smells nice or because I want to smell nice. I buy perfume because it smells interesting or whatever. Weird. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. be honest. It's weird yeah. and different. <laughs> yeah. And gross. Sometimes because it's gross. Yeah, I get and it. And so I started wondering, like, at, where, at what point? Like, have I just completely lost my way at some point? And, and now I'm just spending all this money on stuff that smells like shit. And, yeah. you know, like, like, and saying to people like, no, nah, it smells like, you know, puke and cow shit. And this one right. smells like rotten flesh. I love it. And and like, at what point did I go down that path? And, yeah, and where did I... you lose yourself? Yeah. You know, and, and, and sometimes it takes like a, a commoner, like, I mean, somebody that's not in the perfume to bring you back. And my son one time asked me, he's like, why would anybody want to smell like that? And you're like, that's a fucking good question. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how did I get to this? You know? Well, see, I'm still the... in that zone where I just think, well, why would anyone not want to smell like this? But yeah, I, I, I definitely, I, I, it's starting to get to this. I'm starting to sort of see outside of that box now and start thinking like, yeah, maybe I'm the one that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's just kind of like the natural progression of, of any enthusiast? Like, like you know, circle. car enthusiasts, there comes a point where they don't talk about Toyota Corollas, right? <laughs> they don't talk about Pontiacs. They want to talk about weird and rare shit and unique stuff they don't see every day. I reckon, yeah, because it's like exploration, isn't it? It's like you, you, right. know, you sort of get deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, don't you? Right. But every, everybody knows what a Corolla looks like and what it drives like. But let's talk yeah. about a car and bring attention to it. You know, let's bring let's 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 bring some detail to this. Yeah, I reckon it's it's just it's just that I, I, I say natural progression, isn't it? Like the more you dig, the more you discover, and the more mm. that's part of being a human is exploring and discovering, right? I mean, the yeah. same with the fragrance world. We don't talk about all the sauvages and blue de Chanel. I mean, we talk about more. Well, not unless your name's Jeremy. No, well, yeah, we don't because it's yeah. so common. <laughs> yeah. And why is it like? Why is it? Why do we? Like, why do most enthusiasts or most people here, like, why do we crap on Sauvage? Like, what is it specifically? Oh, because it's so passe. Do you uh, know what I mean? I mean <laughs> I'm I, mass we... I'll be the first to admit I'm a massive snob. Like, you know, I, okay. I, I, don't, I don't want to smell like... Why, why do I want Sauvage? Every cunt smells like it. Yeah. It's on the fucking bus stop. Why the fuck right. do I want that? Because um, it's just so common, right? Yeah, it's just... Ugh. But and like, because, like, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess, in, in sense of a smell. It's just crass. Mm. Yeah. And so we want to be is, different. And we but want to be noticed yeah. for wearing something different. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. No offense to Toyota Corolla drivers, by the way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we got to drive amazing, something. Amazing car. <laughs> But that's sort of what I say about like kind of losing your way a bit. Like, like so one of my favorite fragrances like of all time is like Terre d'Amez. But I never wear it anymore because even when I see it on the show, I've got like a vintage like from the, the when it released like 2009. I bought it the, like in the first week of its release and I've still got a bottle of it on my shelf. And I look at it and I go, ah, oh, no, I'm not going to wear that today because it's just Terre d'Amez. Like, right. So my own snobbery gets the better of me like yeah. completely. I agree. Um, Terra is a brilliant perfume. I think it's amazing. But again, I can't remember the last time I wore it. It's probably been over a year. Yeah. I think it's I, an amazing perfume, especially for the market that it's been released in. So it's a, probably the perfume that, uh, that, that, that was the perfume that like dug my hole for me. Like, so, you know, gave, well, gave me the shovel maybe because it was, uh, it was that, that I, because I used to wear perfume a lot before that, but I never really kind of gave it too much of a thought. It was like I was really like I had quite a bit of perfume for that for somebody who didn't give a shit, if you know what I mean. But it was just because I, it, I liked it, it smelled nice. But it was Terre d'Amez that I, was, I realized like, oh, actually, I like this. What is it I like? And I started mm. kind of dissecting it. And I that was what got me into. I, I, I realized it was the vetiver that I was into. So then I start found Serge Luton and stuff like that through that. And that was the end of so, that so yeah i mean i i, I blame ted ms for all of this shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is always fun too speedwolf says it's fun to have someone who isn't in the fragrances smell your collection 
and see what they like best. And I agree to see what they perceive in the perfume. Sometimes they get it. Sometimes they don't. And it's usually, you know, when you remind them of what the perfume is inspired by, it's like, I love getting that. Oh yeah. Like, I see what you mean. I know what you're talking about. That reaction recently had a gal do this. Her favorites were gone. Santal Royale and Eau Sauvage. ED. I can't believe, I mean, I can't imagine Santal Royale would be uh, a very common people pleasing scent. There is a little bit of muskiness mm. and dirtiness in there. I don't think it's for everybody. When would you guys admit that H24 is a great perfume? <laughs> Who's asking that? Jira Rose. <laughs> um, it's it's shy. Yeah. Well, Rich, Rich said it first. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it shite? No. I think it's a little too simple for enthusiasts. I don't think it's horribly shite. I think it's probably better. It's some of the best stuff to come from the modern big houses. Um, I think it's more interesting and I'd reach for it before something like Sauvage. No, uh, it's 24 shite. But I think they could have done such a better job. I mean, they had so much time to release a new men's perfume and they came up you with You can H24. say that about any perfume. You could yeah, say, you of know, course. Queer to Rusty, Chanel could have done a better job. That, yeah, come on. You can, yeah, absolutely. You can imply that about <laughs> anything. Yeah, you can uh, say yeah, that about I mean, Tesla's SpaceX. He could have done a better, but where do you stop? Where do you I stop? I wish he would stop. I, mean, I, I think I, <laughs> I think I just like imagine it to be a new like Sauvage or a new Blue de Chanel or something like that. But yeah, I had high expect high expectations. That's what the I'm trying Sauvage to say. Sauvage music is like EDM or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I really like EDM. Yeah, yeah. I really like R and B. Yeah, I know what you guys mean that it's shite, <laughs> shite compared to everything else. But does it does it smell horrible? Like, does it turn you off? Does it turn your stomach? Sort of. No, way? of course. Is that what you of guys are saying. Not. It's a pleasant. It's a pleasant light smelling perfume. I mean, it's it's not bad. I, I would say that I genuinely, I genuinely did not like the smell of it. The same way I genuinely don't like the smell of Sauvage. Um, okay. The, Does it got offend you? I don't like metallic. I don't like metallic notes. The same reason I don't like Platinum Mega East. Platinum Mega East is not a shit fragrance, but I don't like I actively do not like Platinum Mega East. It's got a horrible Ooh. fucking metallic note in it. Yeah. Um, but does, but does, it, does, does H24 offend you, though? Like, do you think it's vile? Um, does it offend us? It offends us that the thing I would think that was good. Like, they, like, as if, as it, it it offends us that they haven't tried to appeal to me. It offends us that they haven't tried harder. It, it offends us that like I don't the think you like, were like the target like... market for this fragrance because you. you no, I mean you, you you haven't bought anything prior to 1980. I think you know <laughs> a lot of your perfumes are older than you are. Like you that weren't even cool. born when a lot of the perfumes you own were released. So I don't think you were what they were aiming for here. I don't think they, that, that I am, but. I'm 36. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what Eugene said. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 um, I've bought some new stuff. Like, I bought, um, Eau Sauvage Parfum. I bought, um, the latest one. I actually like the, the 2017 more than the 2012. Um, oh, really? I've, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I do actually. Um, I don't think the Merce suits it as much as the Elemi does. I think Elemy okay. suits that. Perfume. I think the Elemy suits that perfume more than the. It's not uh, as it's not as harsh. No, yeah, I, I like Mer as well. I do. I really like Mer, um, but I just don't think Mer. I just don't think Mer goes with goes with the rest of the fragrance as well as the Elemy does. I think the Elemy's like sort of soft. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a comparison on them, uh, like a proper one. But I look um, out for that review. I like that definitely. I like, yeah, I'm gonna do a comparison, but I think the Mer, there's a um, there's a opium flanker called uh, Secret de Parfum, and it's got that sort of opium vibe, but it's got a huge Mer note in it, and it's absolutely beautiful. So, and I like Oriental Velours by Les Indemnables. Um, mm. so I'm not I'm not a Mer hater. 
I do like myrrh, but it's yeah. just not in fragrance. It just um, doesn't suit the composition of the uh, Osobos. Not for me. Or not yeah, for I me. Get it, I get it. I think as I well, I've it. got like the. I, I think I've got like um, a bias as well because I smelled the 2017 version first. Yeah. So okay. I see. like, like I think that happens. I think it. I think you like the version you smell first. Um, in 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 much more in more in rarer cases, you will like like the vintage. But I think in a lot of cases, you will like the more mod, like the first version that you smell. You know. Yeah, I think there's so many variables that go into judging a fragrance. It's it's hard to say something is just shite without, you know, shite in 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 what kind of way. I don't think H24 is horrible, but I don't think it's great by any means, especially if you're comparing it to some other Edemez classics. Um, they could have done a lot worse, but I, I think it is. I do prefer this to Sauvage or maybe even Bleu de Chanel. Or... So do you think H24 has a future? Like, a what? is it going to be a future? A future for Hermes. It's definitely not. It might not be in my future. I don't think it's it's it's. It's well, I'm talking like they... in in the in the form of like flankers. Are they going to do it? Oh, the parfum, parfum. Yeah, they'll yeah. be okay. They'll be three okay. or four flankers. Yeah, absolutely. They can maybe be interesting if they like come up with some other notes, additional notes, something like that. See, for I... me, a perfume is like shit if it's just just uninspired and and like that's what like a lot of like savage and stuff like that is to me it's just i mean in a way i suppose it's very like engineered fragrance right it's it's it, it, it's, it's, it's there's not there's nothing in there by accident you know it's it, it's focus group to death but mm. but that precisely is why it's bad because it, it's just bland it's it's made for everyone to smell it and go oh yeah that doesn't smell, you know. That, that 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 doesn't really smell like anything. But at the same time, it doesn't smell bad either. So it's you know, it's a bit like what we say about the salon earlier. You know, it's it's very middle of the road. It's very like, oh look, you're wearing a perfume, but don't worry, you're not really wearing a perfume. Do, yeah. Do, so because you know, you know, uh, uh, people don't, you know, men still have this issue, especially men's perfume. They still have this issue of like, you know. Oh, oh, it's not perfume. I'm wearing an aftershave. Do you know what I mean? And, and they, they don't like the idea of perfume. You know what I mean? Like, they're wearing a lighter. Yeah. You know, like an aftershave or a cologne. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah, they, yeah. Like, you say perfume and, it, you know. They're offended right there. Yeah, yeah. It's still like, like yeah, that's for women, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what? So, like, yeah. you know, it's quite a hard sell, I think, for a lot of companies to, to, to sell, like, a mainstream perfume that actually smells of anything good because the, 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 the brief surely must be for most of them like make something that smells forgettable and 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 easy to ignore in a way you know okay so we've kind of assessed that you think h24 is shit it's bland (laughs) it's focused group to death which is fine these are your judgments on the perfume knowing all that that it's not made for you know with you being the target Knowing all that, are you able to enjoy something like H24 for what it is? For the pile of uh, shit that it is. I can't enjoy it. You can't I do not can. enjoy it. I, I, I can't. I don't enjoy it at all. There's nothing about it that I enjoy. Okay. Like, I, mean, I can't. Uh, which, I just which can't. Fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, See, I knowing always all get that, I can up. enjoy something, you know, for what that is. It doesn't mean I'm never gonna wear it, or I, uh, you know, I'm gonna fucking torch it or not buy it. You know, I can still enjoy it for that piece of crap that it is. For me, I always get tripped at... up with huh? the, the. For me, I always get tripped up with the price, and I, I like I get stuck on that, and I I get like almost like take that personally, like. You're really going to charge like seventy quid a bottle for this? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, and I, I find it hard to get over that, and so, so that like angers me in a way because it, it's yeah. almost like the barefaced kind of balls of this. Like, like for ten pound a bottle, I can get something that smells pretty interesting. 
<clears throat> off of eBay, you know, from the Middle East. Um, yeah. Or I can get this absolute fucking toilet for 70 quid. Like, you know, like the Savage Elixir. Like, what the fuck, man? 120 quid or whatever it was. Jesus Christ, for 120 quid, there is... that. The options are li- literally ended. Like, like 120. If you're going to spend 120 pounds on a perfume, the world's your oyster. Like, like anything you want, you can have anything almost. You know, like with all the indie houses and all the rest of it. You know, all of the, the, the artistic stuff out there. Or you could buy a bottle of Sauvage Elixir. That takes the piss, man. Like, yeah, you know, like and that- anything that you choose that happens to be 120 dollars, you can make the same argument and say, you know, this perfume is 120 dollars. What else can I get for 120 dollars in comparison? So where does that? Oh yeah, but I mean, I'm, I, I'm comparing like perfumes to perfumes because, of course, yeah, you could say that. But I mean, I'm saying like in terms of like if you were going to spend 120 pound on a perfume specifically, so we narrow it down to just like scents, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I, we're just like arguing for argument's sake. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, 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 I know, I, and I also appreciate like that I am like fully a snob, and I don't think my attitude towards it is healthy. Like, I think it would be much better if I could just appreciate it for what it is. But instead, I've gotten down this kind of horrible road where I smell stuff like that, and it just yeah personally grates on me. <laughs> yeah, you've um, smelled thousands of things, and you want something more fulfilling, something better made, something more interesting, something that doesn't smell like a synthetic. I get, you know, I get all that too. I wonder if, so, again, if someone though, gave it to you, would you wear mm. it? If someone gave it to you, like, would you rather go without wearing anything, or would you wear H twenty four? Oh, I'd wear H24. Oh, yeah. that's an interesting question. Yeah. What about you, so... Rich? Would you <laughs> rather wear H24 or nothing if that was the only option? Um well, it's not the only option, so I don't have to I don't have to worry <laughs> about it. Probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would probably I would probably I would probably wear nothing because oh, because I, I don't like the metallic smell. Right. Do you I think really that's something really... that you can overcome, though, with, no. a, with some wearing, with some understanding of it? Do you think you no. can make friends with metal? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's like instant. It's gut roll. It's, it's, it's like it's if I don't like that smell like at all. It's not just perfume. It's like if I smell that, then I'm like, oh, what's that horrible smell? You know what I mean? <laughs> is that in every it's, perfume? It, bitch? Is that like you just don't like metallic sort of? Yeah, um, yeah, it is. It's, it's. I really struggle. I really struggle with feu de bois as well. Uh, Baptême de feu, not feu de bois. Baptême yeah, de, Baptême feu. de feu. Yeah, that's got a huge metallic note in it. It smells like mm. burning metal. It smells like hot yeah. metal. It smells like. It smells like. It smells like water steaming away on hot, hot metal. Um, yeah. And I loved your review about. It. I watched your review, and I've bought. I've got a bottle. I, I didn't buy it because of your review, but I, I had a bottle, and I remember watching. It. I remember thinking that is exactly how this smells. It's got this bonkers twist of like ginger and castorium, which is where I think maybe the metal might come from. The castor, like a metallic sort mm. of bodily sort of irony, like secretion, and then with fucking gingerbread. It's <laughs> only. only only Serge Luton and Christopher Sheldrake could be so outrageous. Um, and it's got that, and I can't, and I love Serge Luton, but I will never wear that perfume. Um, it's a real iron as well, isn't it? It's, it's like, you know, if yeah. you take iron tablets or if you were like, if you bit your cheek or something, you know, and it's, it's yes. really like, it's, it's iron. It's, there's no like, yeah. mask in it. It's got that, it gets you right at the, the back and the sides of your tongue, you know, like the flanks of your tongue. <laughs> it, gets, yeah. it gets you right there it's really metallic as if you've licked the battery it's got that sort of it's got that sort of like like it's not zing yeah it has yeah it's got a zing like a twang yeah. it's it's so crazy i don't like metallic notes in anything um i'm trying i'm searching my brain for like anything that's got like a metallic vibe that i've got that i wear but i don't think that i don't think there is Sensitive duck. Don't don't say bra is slightly metallic. Yeah, I don't like that either. Frederick Mall. Um, do you yeah. think Rich or or any of you do you find Serge Luton wearable? 
Yes. Yes. No, I love yeah. Sergio as well. He's one, one of my absolute favorites. I, I, I actually, yeah. Do you yeah, reach for them often? Mm. Yeah, I wear Vetiver Oriental <laughs> almost like once a week for the last 10 years. <laughs> Dante Bra is the worst mall. I think it's the most creative, to be honest. It's very creative. I don't know if it's the worst. With Sergio Tone, there are some of them. There are some of them that are just so bonkers that it's like, like, can I actually wear this? It's almost as if that the brand's daring you to wear it. You know yeah. what I mean? But but then some of them are just like some of them are absolutely fucking brilliant. Like, you know, mm. uh, some of them like like. Like Shergi's mental, yeah. Um, Shergi's like really common, and it's like I say it's really common. It's the most popular, and it's out there. But if you smell it for what it is, it's it's really strange. Like it's got a hay note in it. I mean, who thought that was a good idea? You know, who well, thought hey, like, that's, like, that's like Coumarin, really? It's been going on for a hundred years. Yeah, exactly. It's like who thought who thought it was a good idea to use hay, and yet it works. Yeah. You know that dry, grassy, yeah. yellowy sort of mm. that, like that sort of vibe about how he gets these things to work is mm. just absolutely insane. Ambra, Ambra really so soapy. Yeah, it's the iris. I think it's got a huge mm. iris sort of like uh, people say it's a tobacco fragrance. It's an iris fragrance on me. I never thought it's it was a particularly strong tobacco fragrance because I, when I no. got it, I was expecting it to be like. De denser and like deeper, but it's, it's quite a light fragrance. So, like, yeah, it's more an amber than tobacco. Mm. So Serge Luton's is knowing it's known as a perfume enthusiast brand. Every, you know, most enthusiasts respect the brand of Serge Luton. Which one do you think is the most challenging to wear? Oh, Iris which, Silver which, Mist. Iris, really? Mm. Okay. Smells. I, I I had a bell jar and I sold it because oh, you, I I just it just smelled like dentist. Dentist. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it's brilliant, but it's I, I I never ever. I mean, I don't care what other people think, but I always ask people what they thought of it, and I never ever heard anyone say they liked it. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I thought it was great, but I I never heard anyone ever say they liked it. Everyone's was always. Would always say that smells weird. That smells like, yeah, quite weird. Basically, everyone just thought it smelled weird. <laughs> Do you struggle with Iris? No, I love Iris. It's well, that's the reason I bought it. It's, it's, it's I, I absolutely love Iris. Like, I really like really dark gothic irises, you know, like uh, Joe Malone in the intense Oris and Sandalwood is, is just an incredible Iris mm. perfume, like really gothic, dark, like rooty, smells like carrots. Brilliant. Mm. Um, so you know I love it, um, but I, yeah, Iris Silver Mist to me was was hard, tough, tough break. Whereas I, I found know. Musk Kublai Khan to be really fine. Yeah, and that's yeah. I've I've heard people. both ends of the spectrum. Some people struggle with Musk Kublai Khan calling it too shitty. Other people saying it's not shitty enough. So um, there's mm. way better challenging perfumes than Musk Kublai Khan. It's hard to please everybody. Do you, I Rich, don't know if there was a muscular Khan, if there was something in that that I just was missing, because to me it was really clean. I, I think Rich struggles with uh, Kublai Khan. He calls it. Yeah, poopy. it smells like. It smells like. Um, it smells like a toilet, right? That hasn't been flushed in ages, and there's like, there's like, there's like shit in the drain, and the drain, <laughs> the like the shit, the shit dried out, right? So like the shit is the shit is like dried out and it's got that sort of like dry poo sort of like like stale dry poo vibe. It's not it's not it's not great stuff. I won't lie. I wanted to like it and I couldn't because it was fucking horrible. I don't find it that um, vulgar. I I find it much more musky, like animal stale fur poo. with maybe some shit stuck on, like you know, oh. some shit stuck onto the fur. With some caramel as well. There's a little bit of sweetness there, kind of. So, have you smelled it? Still... You, you guys, have you did when you smelled it? Was this? Is it? Are we going back are you, old versions or the the, the black CL bottle versions? Because I've only smelled the one in the black new newer bottle. 
That's Ooh. the one I'm talking Ooh. about. That's Shiseido, isn't it? Yeah. Oof. That's proper like vintage. But um so that's yeah, so that's pro the proper one. See, I'm not sure if they've watered it down or something because I tried it in the CL bottles and it was really, really clean. Like I just thought it was I, I couldn't smell any shit in it at all. So I wonder <laughs> if they've if they've reformulated it and it's really clean now or something. If they've de shitted it. If the yeah, they cl <laughs> cleared out their changed, drains. <laughs> they've watched, yeah, they've changed the plumbing. I know Rudy had a Grat Seal bottle, and I think he said he's getting rid of it. I wonder what he thinks. I'm not sure if he's. I haven't seen him in a while, but maybe he can give us his 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 kind of idea. But I find it. I don't find it that challenging, even though mine's a little bit poopy. It's it's more musky. Um, I don't I don't feel like I smell like shit when I wear this. <laughs> But I do find it musty and and kind of like warm, you know, you know, a yeah. warm poop. <laughs> Interesting how everybody sees it differently. I think all Sergio Tons are a little bit tricky to wear, though. They're very like they're, they've got a lot of character, um, right? Which which is cool. So as soon as you've got something with a lot of character, it makes you know it, it becomes sort of pigeonholed, or you know, even in, if it's just your mind, like it, it becomes pigeonholed as to when you can wear it right um so i find quite a lot of them to be quite difficult to wear in that in that sense um have, have although you smelled vitriol? And how i don't do what sorry, sorry. Rich. i was gonna say have you smelled vitriol de wallet no i haven't that is i've got a, a vintage bottle of the old 50 mil bottles i've got one of them and me and my friend I've got it and i unboxed it with my friend and i sprayed it on and at first, we were a bit like, oh, that's strange. And I liked it. And she thought, that's strange. And then within like 20 minutes, she came right round to it. She thought it was absolutely incredible. Like, And I really liked it as well. It's like one of the if one of the, the best reactions I've had to a Serge Luton's. Um, because like we say, they are strange. Even Vetiver Oriental. I've got like five bottles of the vintage Vetiver Oriental, like the Palais Royale. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. it's like, it's 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 not it's not a vetiver. It's not an oriental. It's not. It sort of manages to be both those things without being either of them. And it's like yeah, yeah. It's a, it's well, a proper. It's, it's a sorry. It's the most schizophrenic perfume I think I've ever smelled. Like it's all over the shop. It's yeah. Yeah. You like smell. Have you smelled? Have you smelled? Participate passe. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, Maybe I'm not sure. I've that's the cheap curry one. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It totally smells like cheap, like chip shop curry. You know, yeah, like yeah, know you know, like you the. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's proper outrageous. Um, I, I I like he does a lot of spicy ones like that. I like that. I I, I like because Lino Marble is is another one that I really like. That's that spicy kind of thing, and um, there's another one, isn't there? Um, uh, I forget, but there's there's about a good three or four that are really like spice cabinets. Like, it's have you ever smelled the um the sans the sans alcohol uh, versions? They released nice. in two in two thousand and seven. They released four four different like four of the perfumes that all released, but they didn't have alcohol in them, and they were just like a gel. They were like you a know goo. Why they did that? <laughs> I don't know why they did was that. It for the Middle Eastern market? I don't know. Might have been. I don't think so. Um, they just didn't have any. They just didn't have any alcohol in. They were just like thick, yeah. like like jelly. I think I when know. Guerlain originally released the uh, the desserts to Orient, they marketed them as without alcohol. The original oh, three, and I think it was for the Middle East market. Because they're not supposed to drink or something like that. No, they're not allowed to touch alcohol. Saracens is amazing. That's nothing comes close to Saracens, Le Mer and El Aterine. Yeah, Saracens is amazing. Like for a um, jasmine perfume, it's like, I mean, it's just yeah. straight jasmine, but it's, it's, it is nice. Oh, oh. Yeah, I 
know what I mean? I'm gonna take my dog for a walk. Yeah, I'm I'm shattered. Like I'm going to be going in a minute. Eugene's like what? It's like half three in the afternoon there, isn't it? Half five. <laughs> five forty one. Still kind of early, five. but I, I can find things to keep me busy with. We're already here for three hours and a bit. If I, unless anyone else wants to come on, I'm going to jump off too. I haven't, oh, yeah, I haven't I heard of Nietzsche going a bit. He may have fell asleep. I don't know what time it is in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. It's uh, 11.40. Oh, shit. He's probably, yeah, he's, watching, he's probably watching soccer highlights, checking in on uh, – what's his name there? Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic, yes. The big Bosnian Croat. He's half, he's half, he's, he's, he's a lot of things, isn't he? He's like Bosnian. He's Bosnian, he's Swedish. Bosnian, Serbian, Croat, Swedish, yeah. <coughs> he's like a gypsy. I <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a lot, he's got like a, he's got, he's fucking like six foot four though and he moves like he's like five foot six. Dude, and he's you like a samurai ninja too, isn't he? I mean, yeah, according yeah, to him, yeah. he is like a god, right? So, yes, that's right. According to him, he is a god. That's right. Yeah. I, I love, I love the way he talks. He's hilarious. He's... Yeah, he talks about himself in the third person. Third person, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is <isn't quite> intimidating. <laughs> yes, he's a bit like right. where a cant man used to be. Like, I'm off out. I'm gonna go take my dog for a walk in my pajamas. Um, in the middle right, of the because I'm good, not... to, good to see you. Eh? Jump back on anytime you're free. Yeah, yeah. Like cheers, cheers Nice to see you all. See you later. All right, man. Nice we'll one, talk to you later. Bye, mate. Who's um the, that? Who's the tennis player there? The the Serbian tennis player that wasn't allowed to Djokovic. Play. Djokovic, yeah. yeah. Novak Djokovic. What do you think of that? Any any comments? It's the law of the land. He shouldn't be treated any differently than anyone else. Yeah. That's the law of their land. Whether the law of the land's right or not, but he's gone yeah. there. Yeah, and he also lied. He also lied as well. He said that he had coronavirus on the sixteenth of um, on the sixteenth of December, and then he was seen out meeting the president of Serbia on the eighteenth of December. So he's like, he's just he's just trying to finagle. He's he's what he's whether it's right or wrong that he should be allowed in a country because you've had a vaccine or not is one thing. But the law applies to everybody, and I can understand yeah. why they've kicked him. I can see it from both sides, really. Yeah, but he's just like. I don't know. He's just missed out. The thing is, as well, is that he's banned from Australia for three years now. Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. And is this the regular tournament that Australia yep. has? Yeah, yeah, it's the it's so the open be able to yeah. compete. Do you think that can be yep. turned over? Well, they're, they're talking about maybe they can turn it over um, in future, but they're all. But also, the French have come out and said, "If is that if uh, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a vaccine, he's not allowed to get into France either." So he'll miss Politics. the French Open. Fuck. So it's 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 the it's the decisions you make. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's he's the decisions you make. Hide and then he's got to make his choice, and it looks like he's sticking. If he doesn't want a vaccine, yeah. If he doesn't want a vaccination, right? If he doesn't want a vaccination, that's fair enough. He doesn't have to have a vaccination, but there are going to be consequences for that decision. There are also going to be consequences for the decision if the decision was opposite. If he decided to have a vaccination, there would be other consequences such as he might feel like shit you know what i mean yeah. he yeah, might yeah, like yeah. he might not he, he might take weeks from and when you're at when you're an athlete at that level right like a tiny little thing can send you miles off course when you're operating at that level right like a vaccination like like just any sort of vaccination can knock you fucking ill you know what i mean um but you've got to have um yeah, he could just bought a certificate in Lithuania. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think. But isn't that a crime? The Australians have put him in jail for that. Right. If they so found out he wasn't, because they would be able to, they would be able to blood test not him. Not a very wise. Uh, not the a Australians would be able to blood test him for. Uh, you'd be able to blood test people and find out if they've had the vaccine or not. Totally. Yeah. Because you would have you'd have antibodies. Mental. So you can buy certificate now, or certificate. <laughs> they'll be, they'll be out there, yeah. They'll be out there, yeah. That's the thing crazy. is, is that if if, if the forgeries, the forgeries, I don't know how to mm. check them. All right. Uh, 
Okay. Probably a good time to end it then at three hours, almost three hours, 30 minutes. It's quite That's a stream. Right. It is quite a stream. It is. It was good. Interesting. Interesting topics from, from Wasad and, and Jean-Paul Guerlain. Hopefully he can clear his situation. Hopefully the Wasser situation kind of unfolds and, and we can see what's going to happen there really soon. I missed that. What was that all about? You'd have to go back and watch it. It's <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Way too much to to bring up, but um, yeah, I'll check that later. We got into Britney Spears. We got into Elon Musk, and you know, social media, and all kinds of good stuff. But uh, yeah, I thank you guys for coming on, Rich. Appreciate it. Good hearing from you. Thank good you. seeing you. Good chatting, Nishko, Ben. Thank you guys. Everybody in the comments, thank you so much. We'll see you very soon, hopefully before the end of the week. And uh, have a good night. Bye, everybody. Night. Bye. -bye.